There's funny, then there's me. Oh. It is 5.47. I'm Danny Bonaducci. This is Casey OK. Good morning. I find you funny. Thank you. I find you sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> I find you a big liar about moons. What are you talking about? You called or texted or did some weird voodoo that sends a message to me and said, Oh my God, <laughs> the moon. And I looked high and I looked low. Well, I didn't look actually high. You know, it's early in the morning, <laughs> man. Have. But I didn't. I did not see the moon. Now I believe that what is, what would be the bonus round in line to us about the moon? Plus this time, Paul saw your. I moon. saw the moon. Yeah, there yeah. was a moon there. It, it was, was the most spectacular moon ever. It was bright. I would say it was bright. Yeah, not a you, full moon. You throw around the biggest, bestest ever <laughs> all the time, and there, it's rarely above. Oh, nice! It yeah. was. It was the brightest you would see in three hundred lifetimes. Yeah, yeah. It's normally what you'd say. It was kind of reddish, pinkish, no, golden, it was yellow, very yellow, and it like was a normal moon. No, <laughs> and then I saw Mars. Mars was right to the left of it, and it was bright. Red. See how confused you sound? It's right, left. Right, left. Yeah, we all heard it. <laughs> I did not you know, see Mars. Does your doctor know that you see things right, left? You right. seriously looked up at the sky and couldn't yeah. find the moon. Yeah, I was on my treadmill uh, as every morning, and uh, is there a window there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking. I'm sorry, man. No, yeah, it has to be done. Uh, but then I actually, you know, I have a bunch of windows to floor up from there. Yeah. I have. I'm gonna go with ten windows. I don't know if that's true. And they're big. They're as big as these windows in the studio, almost. Yeah. Um, and I did not see the moon. There, maybe there's a building or yeah. something maybe. in its way. It's right over where where you and I live. Obviously, people listening wouldn't have the same view, but it was right over by West Seattle. Yeah, it'd be right where I looked then, and right where I was the last time I actually saw the moon that yeah. you say is there. Derek it, and Tori, did you guys see it on your drive in? I saw it this morning. Yeah. And was it spectacular? Pretty big. I hate you. See, nobody, yeah. I, I, don't even know, I don't even know what Derek's trying to do, but I like yeah. the way he's straddling that. I will give her this. It was almost a full moon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost spectacular. <laughs> there it, is. it would have been low enough in the sky that you might have had something just blocking it, Danny. Uh, yeah, there. I, I'm trying to think what would be that way. From down in the guest room that I put a treadmill in, there's houses in the way and stuff. But once I went up to the, to the you know, where the kitchen is and stuff, I should have been able to you see. You should have. Yeah. It's like that big, what is it, lunar eclipse today. This is, is really what they say is a spectacular moon. It's not just me. I no, mean, I, I am you. probably crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> just, I, I think it might have been a little closer to meh than, oh my God, you've I, never seen anything I like it. I will punch you. Punch Paul. Okay, I'm Paul punch saw Paul. it and doesn't saw, think it's yeah. great. I would Paul's punch a... Paul and Derek. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'd punch Derek. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a strapping young man. Lord knows what you might do to me. <laughs> and that's how uh, so uh, let's see. Where do I go? There's funny and there's me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, not true. They're one and the same. Right? Uh, let me run this by you, Mr. Uh -oh. Man. So I'm walking up to the whole bunch of drama happened on the way to uh, the Queen Anne Farmers Market. Walking by with my lovely wife, Amy, and something happens that has happened about mm, twice a month and couldn't make her more happy. And that is somebody saying, usually from behind her, nice tattoo, because she's got the Abbey Road on right oh. the back of her arm. And she likes it when people, you know, because a lot of times they're like-minded people because they wouldn't come up and say anything. Sure. You know, it is a nice tattoo, but so what? I have a bunch of nice tattoos. Nobody says anything to me about them, except people whose names are actually tattooed on me. <laughs> they sometimes say, take that off your body. Right, so they're Beatles fans, which is well, cool for, for her. For the most part, abs absolutely. So uh, we're walking, and we hear, nice tattoo. Now, that's my impression of a super deep voice guy whose vocal cords were blessed by God. Yeah. Like, I can't even tell that that was humor, human. The way, oh, nice tattoo. Okay. He sounded less like a pervert than that. <laughs> but anyway, he really, he really liked it, and it it seemed disembodied. Like I didn't get it at all. Voice of God. Yeah, voice of God. And then it turned out to be close. Uh, this guy named Daniel, who then got up alongside us and said, uh, "Amy and Danny Balducci," but except the Amy and Danny Balducci. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that she, that Queen Anne Living magazine is going to be taken over by this guy. So she'll be writing her travel column for this new guy. Oh, cool. Oh. But I didn't know that yet. And he's about 6'2", and he's about handsome, and he's got about shoulder-length hair. He's got about a beard. So yeah. I don't about to like him. Oh. Not much at all. I want him to go away right now. So they talk for another couple of seconds about, uh, you know, Small talk. He hasn't really said who he is or what he does or why he knows my wife. And yeah. so I say, at about this tone, hey, 
Is anybody going to tell me how you two know each other? <laughs> now, I'm with my wife all the time. I'm not actually like how you know each other, but he's real tall and cute, and yeah. I've had just about enough of this. So then he explains he's the new guy at, at the uh, magazine, but now I've unnerved him. <laughs> and he goes, he looks, at, he's looking at Amy, and I'm right next to him. He goes, you know, he's talking about, you know, you're going to be working for me soon. Why don't we? And he stops, and he looks at me. All of us, all of us, go out to coffee. Why don't we all? Go out? And I'm thinking this is kind of cool. This guy's half my age and six foot two, and he is in panic mode. I like this. So I, I as we walked away, I said, you can't make me go have coffee with that guy. And she said, well, can, can I go have coffee with the guy? And I said, what are you talking about? Of course you can go have coffee. You can have coffee with anybody you want. I like that I unnerved him. He's a little. I like him a little better than I did when he was just tall and handsome and bugging me. Yeah. So I guess they're going to go out and have an affair. Uh, <laughs> a cup of an affair. I just. I said to her in, in not all seriousness, but it sounded pretty serious. I just went, "You're you're you're not going to have an affair with that guy, right?" <laughs> and she didn't even get mad, like because it's so obvious that she could. You know, was, yeah. she seemed okay with this idea. I'm like, no, honey, I'm. I'm not going to have an affair with Daniel. You just learned his name. You don't need to say it. Is he handsome? I'm, yeah, real handsome. A bastard. Handsome bastard. <laughs> well, that's nice that she's not going to have an affair with him. Actually, I think that's sweet of her. And yeah. that she came to that conclusion so early in, early their, in their relationship. Before, yeah. before the drama started. All right, so uh, we get to the uh, uh, farmer's market, and there's a French bulldog, and it's young, and it's happy, and it's in love. So I walk up so it notices me. And then yeah. here's my, my thing with adorable dogs. I want to pet them and I want to love them. I want to ask permission and blah, blah, blah. So I get the dog's attention. Then I get the owner's attention. I go, oh, can I, can I pet him? In this case, yes. Little doggy's name was Lucy. And I, went, I uh, bent down to pet Lucy. And Lucy jumped up and bashed me in the teeth with her teeth. Like oh. a mouth-to-mouth hard kiss that went wrong. Wow. Although I don't know how dog kisses go right. Um, <laughs> so she was jumping around like a crazy person. And the owner said, uh, and we're making small talk and we're now friends, right? And the owner says this to me with the, oh, she jumps up like that. <laughs> Yesterday, she scared small children. And I said, oh, yeah, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> like, it seemed funny. It is funny. It is funny, isn't it, Paul? Yes. Not to the lady with the dog. They went all around. <laughs>
These are reddish blooms that were found near Bellingham, Samish Bay, East Sound, Marrow Stone Island, Liberty Bay, and Finger Inlets all within the South Sound. So they said these are um, not harmful, but the department's quote is, it's not pleasant. So does it stink? Does it, it taste bad? Does it just... It looks like goop. No, I don't like goop. The same when you started to describe it, I thought of that goo that's inside that sarcophagus. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's not drink any of it. It almost is like that, but if that turned into a jellyfish, does that make sense? And because... floats on the surface, right? Yeah. And wears scuba gear and dances to <laughs> disco. <laughs> don't swim in any of it. It does not look like you want to swim in it. And in some areas, uh, they've shown some aerial shots, and it's sort of like seaweed. You know, when you see yeah. seaweed uh, near the shore, except it's reddish brown algae. I don't want to swim in that because you can get tangled in that. Yeah. You'll drown for sure. And you'll drown in goo, which may, you're still dead at the end of it, but I'd prefer to drown in regular water than Danny Bonducci <laughs> found dead in goo. Yeah. It's pretty gross. They say that this is what happens periodically because of the heat. Right. That uh, the, with these unusually warm temperatures we've been having. I'm blaming the heat for everything. I could not get cold water this morning. Everything oh. was warm. My like goodness. I met it ran thinking, of course it's warm. I get it. I'm, I'm, I tried to drink out of a hose in Palm Springs not that long ago and didn't think about it. And just, it was 100 degrees on yeah. my lips. Yeah. Just, oh. Some hot lips. Uh, but uh, I figured, you know, give it a minute. Tops, not right. even all real men, a few seconds. Nope, wouldn't get under what I'm gonna guess 90 degrees. Oh, weird, dude. Yeah, I think you got a bigger problem than just the weather being warm. I'm not, I'm not sure that I, I'm not sure that I do. I mean, I'll see, I'll know tomorrow, but yeah, nothing would get. I mean, maybe it's not 90 and I don't know what it feels like because now they think about it, my jacuzzi was 100, it wasn't as hot as my jacuzzi, but <laughs> it was above room temperature for sure. But what do you mean you'll know tomorrow? So I'll run the water again when I get home today and find out yeah. so I know. An explosive wildfire is tearing through two small northern California communities before it uh, tore through these towns. It has now, or afterwards rather, it has now reached the town of Redding, killing a bulldozer operator on the fire lines, burning three firefighters, destroying dozens of homes and forcing thousands to flee unexpectedly. So they said this uh, fire, like we know there is a danger of wildfires, but they're usually is a little bit of a heads up. Right. And you get some notification that there's a fire headed your way. You might want to think about packing some stuff up. They said this moved so quickly, nobody had any notice and people just had to run. But they ran successfully because remember when Greece caught fire and 174 yeah. people died or something? Yeah. I thought, how is that possible? So now I still think that our guys here are running to safety. Right. Yeah, they were able to get most everybody out. As I said, one person has perished and several others are injured, but they are describing this as pretty significant. Uh, 92,000 people live in this area. They said it's a wall of flames nonstop, uh, and they said this is likely going to get worse, more people being hurt. All eyes this morning will be on the stock market, as yesterday we saw a historic drop in Facebook stock. Yeah. It also pulled all technology stocks lower on Wall Street, even as some other sectors were able to climb. Facebook plummeted 19%, and this was the largest one-day loss in value of any publicly traded company in history. Wow. Yeah, even including the Great Depression, because nothing was worth that much. Yep. I think it was worth millions, not billions. Really, really crazy. And so this was obviously terrible news for the company, terrible news for Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, and they said that the entire technology sector was wound up being hit by this. But on the other end of the spectrum, yeah. after hours yesterday, Amazon shares jumped because the company trounced earning expectations. Now, web services grew for Amazon, their cloud business. They said revenue Jeez. surges there 50%. And that Amazon, according to analysts, will ultimately beat Apple in the race to one trillion dollars. Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised about that at all. I I think Bezos, although I do think he's manic, I, I think he's running hard and could make a gigantic mistake. But so far, I've seen no evidence of that. Yeah. He's doing really good moves. Spends a lot of time sending rockets into the air with nothing <laughs> in them, which I think is weird. But yeah, I, my money is on Bezos. Yeah, it's going to be interesting this morning to see if Facebook can rebound. I, I'm not like rooting for Mark Zuckerberg, but I'm not rooting really against I, him. I, I root for Zuckerberg. I think it's a cute story. Uh, I don't know if he's an evil guy or a good guy. I just, yeah. you know, like he's in his goofy little boy's clothes. It makes, <laughs> it makes me, He lost a personal fortune of, ready? 
$16 billion. Yeah, crazy. Who loses $16 billion? How hard can it be to find? It's got to be giant. Someone untied U.S. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos's yacht in northern Ohio and vandalized it. There's a yacht in Ohio? I had no idea. It's a big-ass yacht. 163 foot. What? Who is this person? Am I saying her name wrong? I never know how to no, pronounce it. Betsy her name. DeVos. She's DeVos. the uh, education secretary. And she has a 660 foot yacht? She was pretty wealthy before she became the yeah. uh, education secretary. <laughs> well, you're not secretary. buying that on education secretary <laughs> no, money. We're not right. paying her that well. Oh, yeah. That's the billionaire lady. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. She has a net worth, uh, let's see, $5.3 billion. Her husband's family started Amway right. Corporation. And she has nine other boats. This one is worth forty million dollars. The boats at forty million. This particular yacht wow. that somebody destroyed. It was anchored over the weekend at Huron Boat Basin, and then at her own basin. Uh, Huron Boat oh, Basin. Not her own. Her, yeah, oh, no, it was two words. <laughs> like, she anchored like it in her own Huron? basin. Huron. <laughs> Does that sound better? <laughs> yes. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. So she. Her, One of the Great Lakes. Right. Great Lakes. Yeah. Which are fake oceans. <laughs> Because I, I, I've lived on two different Great Lakes, and you know you never see the other side, no matter yeah. how you, like you just assume it's the ocean, except you know better. Right. Well, and the the wind that can come off of those certainly yep. does feel like the uh, ocean. The snow effect, the lake effect, snow in Chicago when Crazy. I live there, because there's ramps coming up out of the lake, and mm-hmm. it shoots straight in the air. It snows uphill, and it shuts <laughs> the city down. Well, they're having a beautiful summer, just like most of America, but. She won't be taking this one out for a while. Right. They said somebody went over there and intentionally did this. They untied her boat. They did some damage. And the captain called police. And they're now, of course, trying to find the perpetrator because some people don't like that she's filthy rich. And I would say uh, maybe 10% of the people that have boats have security cameras compared to houses. Like, that's not an oh, option really? on most. But, yeah, you'd have to go, hey, you know what? I want a camera. It just doesn't seem nautical. Yeah. You know, to put uh, security cameras on your yeah. boat, but I'll bet some did. Well, we've had really insanely hot temperatures across so much of the, the United States. Here in Washington, we saw the hottest July on record. In California, it's a little crazy. California's Death Valley, Thermal, and Palm Springs say they are seeing the highest temperatures ever. The National Weather Service says a new high of 127 degrees. What? That's too hot. Man. That's too hot. <laughs> and that's where you're going to retire, Dan. That's the man. I went there the other day in 116 and decided I'm walking the two miles to my appointment to right. see if it can be done. Yeah. You know, see if life is possible here. Life's not possible there. <laughs> so this was in Death Valley, a new high of 127 degrees, and it looks like records were broken in Vegas. It was 126 in Vegas. What? 126. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that we did that in the United States yeah. at all. No, I, we, I, I was, if you'd have said to me it was 125 degrees in the Mojave Desert, yeah. or Nevada, I'd have gone, oh, yeah. But Vegas, I mean, a state, you know, Nevada, yeah. that's crazy that yeah. it gets that hot. In uh, Phoenix this week, they tied their previous record set back in 2014. It was 116. And uh, let's see, Coachella Valley was 120. Oh, no, Palm Springs, 121. Yep, yep, yep. That's insane. (laughs) It's 88 degrees in Palm Springs right now. And it's 6 o'clock in the morning. 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 Uh, Yeah, that's crazy. The sun just came up. Wow. Palo Alto police have arrested a teenager who allegedly entered an occupied home trying to rob them, but then woke up the couple sleeping inside to ask for their Wi-Fi password. No way. Yeah. (laughs) So this dude goes in. He's taking a look at what does he want, but then he wants to know what stuff is worth. So he wants to. Oh, yeah, you got to check the value before you steal stuff. So he tries to wake him up. Uh, The dude who he woke up in his 60s was able to uh, overpower him and hold him until police arrived. Wow. When a guy over 60... Hold you up because you asked for the passwords. You are not a, a culpable criminal. Yeah. We know uh, living here in the Seattle area that Amazon uh, kind of has started to dominate parts of our city. Yeah. And those spheres over there are pretty outstanding. The uh, biodomes, what do they call those? Sphere, that, uh, biodomes, whatever yeah. you got. We got it. They're beautiful. Yeah. Well, they're interesting. 
Yeah, they. Uh, I just drove by them the other day, and they look even more spectacular. They, with you know, the sun. maybe I, I poo pooed that because you know, I don't understand them that. to be honest with you. Uh, um, but uh, uh, they're they're certainly different. I guess they're beautiful. I guess they're if they're art and not a building because you give up a lot of room. Yeah. with the sphere that you wouldn't with a box. They're certainly inter- interesting, but they're really yeah. interesting. So I'll give that a level of beauty. Well, we know there are a lot of perks working for these types of companies. Uh, They say a lot of companies now, tech companies in particular, are all about giving back. You know, there'll be a nap room or there'll be cafeterias. They'll put on free concerts. And cafeterias with like real live chefs in there. Yes. Because they never want you to go home. They'll put a gym in there. Yep. In San Francisco, that's potentially coming to an end. San Francisco lawmakers have just introduced a proposal to ban workplace cafeterias that offer free food in an effort to encourage people to go outside and uh, support local businesses. (laughs) (laughs) How are the people working in that cafeteria not a local business? I support uh, local business, but I also support your option for a company bonus. Well, what it is going to boil down to is um, you won't get the zoning. You won't get the licenses, right? So you put up this big building and you want to offer your employees free food. They will not give you the permit to serve food. So yeah, they're going like to they're take that over, away. It seems like they're stepping over their bounds. And it seems they? like favoritism. Like why should the people who would cook the food there be out of work so that someone nice a block call. down the road can have a job? Well, they said uh, this has already gone through in Mountain View, California, which is another tech-heavy city, they said Facebook is opening a new branch in this part of San Francisco, which would be affected. They will not be able to offer anybody free food. That's through. So they got that through. That's a fact. No, they said this. They've introduced this proposal, and it looks like it's going to pass. It has not gone through yet. They should open up uh, Amazon restaurants and stuff down the block. There. Now we're not in violation. Well, when you go, our prices are seventy cents for everything. Filet mignon, <laughs> seventy cents. To my knowledge, uh, Google, I'm sorry, Amazon or and Google don't offer free food here in Seattle. They, you do need to pay for your stuff. I think you can get free bananas. So <laughs> seriously, so is there yeah. is that cool? If you charge them, yes. Then you're allowed to have a cafeteria. Yes. Oh, all right. That seems like also a problem. Just keep super low prices. Yeah. Free food. You cannot. Um, but if, but you know, if you go over, but to South Lake Union, there are so many new businesses. Yeah, it, it just seems like we're being so hard on so, uh, certain things, man. That that uh, the no free, the no free lunches that seems crazy to me. That the head tax that yeah. seems troublesome to business. So here, imagine in our building, we have a coffee shop downstairs that serves lunch and pastries and all that stuff. If they decided to start giving us free lunch here, nobody would ever go to that store downstairs, and they'd go out of business. Would you feel bad? I'd feel kind of bad for them. First of all, I don't know that that's true. Yeah, I mean, we're not the only people in the building. Well, uh, say, and- say, it, say it is. Say yeah. that everybody who works in this building gets free lunch. Yeah. Nobody will patronize that place or uh, go there anymore. But 100% of us would patronize the people who are making our free lunch. So, I mean, why does the government get to pick winners and losers in this case? Yeah, that, I guess they always have, haven't they? I mean, they shouldn't. Your they business should, should be able to operate. They shouldn't. Lincoln police say a 26-year-old was arrested after she ran over a man attempting to repossess her vehicle. You can't do that. <laughs> I would imagine you're probably pretty upset if you went outside to your car and found somebody taking the tires off. Yeah, but if I ran over, everybody tried to repossess my car. I'd have run <laughs> off at least two people. <laughs> have you had cars repo, yeah. Danny? I've had houses repossessed. Oh. I got stuff repossessed. Well, this happened uh, just about midnight, and the cops had gotten a call about an injured pedestrian. When they got there, the 33-year-old victim was attempting to repossess the tires and rims of a vehicle owned by this woman, Amanda. She was behind on her payments, hadn't made one in months. So he he, uh, goes there to repossess the stuff. She said, what are you doing? He said, you haven't paid for them. I'm taking your tires back. Well, she jumps in the vehicle, turns it on into reverse, running him over. Wow. Is he, he dead? He is not. She fled the scene, making it even worse, because now she's getting charged with leaving the scene of an accident right. as well. You know, the weird thing is, how bad is Amanda's life? 
The She's ch- getting her tires repossessed, not yeah. her car. She had she, to finance her tires. She had yeah. to finance her tires and her rims, which I'm sure she's rolling on all 24s or whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. But, man, how bad your life going when uh, they're repossessing your tires? Well, what do we say about Nebraska? Nothing good happens in Nebraska. Nothing yeah. good happens in Nebraska. A topiarist said he is having to make regular repairs to his hedge due to drunk people wanting to have relations with it. With it. Yeah. Not behind yeah. it. No, it's near a, it. well, what does it look like? It's a sexy lady. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, still. He calls it his private lady, and it's a piece of work. It's uh, Sounds like a piece of there's, work. I got to tell you, there is a bush joke here, but I'm afraid to make it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sculpture, a, a topiary yeah. of a woman. That's that's my level of success. You know you've arrived when you got topiaries. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, want, I want bushes that look like giraffes. That's what I want. <laughs> Or in this case, a sexy lady. Yeah. So she is reclining, like um, you know what a uh, one of those like couches for a lady looks like. Like you lean back on the couch. Oh yeah, like a, I like uh, a love seat essentially, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So she is like kind of leaning back on one elbow, and her legs are kind of. She's a, a nineteenth century hooker. That's what she is for sure. In a cat house with red velvet walls. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. uh, assessment. Well, people constantly try to have adult relations with this hedge. And this has been going on for years now. And he says, leave my private lady alone. She's for me and me only. That's what he said. <laughs> well, it's for his visual enjoyment. He doesn't believe you should try to have adult relations with I her. I blame this guy. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, if, if a bunch of people <laughs> over three years are going to try and have sex with, with your bushes, then eventually you should have done a different kind of topiary. Yeah. If you can't pretend, then put a cage around it, you pervert. <laughs> can't put a lady in a cage. Oh, yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for today's Things Are Not Right in Florida. Story of the day. Yay. A 75-year-old man is behind bars after someone wearing a fedora robbed a bank. Noel Johnson, thankfully I found out his name because it's not Danny Bonaducci, has been arrested on charges of armed robbery. He was wearing a fedora, a colorful shirt with suspenders when he went into the bank to rob it. He gave a teller a note that said, I've got a weapon. She took his word for it. Plus, he was wearing a fedora and yeah. a snappy outfit. You gotta trust the guy in a fedora and suspenders. He's not up to anything bad. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I had to look up for a second and see what you were wearing today. <laughs> <laughs> I, How many I'm, pairs of suspenders do you own? Uh, for sure, one. And colorful colorful yeah, shirts. The, yeah. And colorful shirts is me, and I do, I think, well, I own a cowboy hat that's made of felt. Yeah. But I get that. I Here's what you said. That guy has been arrested. That's a headline of mine at least six times. So you're you're cool. He's been busted, and uh, we're not going to be able to wear the fedora in jail. 75 years old. Wow. Oh, Florida. He and Amanda Amanda should get together and have terrible lives. They're (laughs) repossessing her tires and rims, and he's 75 and going to jail because, you know, he couldn't afford to eat or whatever attempts a 75-year-old man to rob a bank. Uh, I'm on the fence about which place is worse, Nebraska or Florida. They're uh, really about the same. I'm on the fence. Nebraska, Florida, prison. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, Nebraska. News brought to you by Car Pros, Rent, and Kia. Hey, want to remind you guys, Mission Impossible Fallout is in theaters today. Yeah. If you would like to go see it on us, you can win tickets at 750. All for telling us where has Sarah's Beaver been. KZOK.com, Facebook.com slash Sarah's Beaver to see those pictures and be ready to call at 750. Not that that's not a great prize because I'm going to see Mission Impossible yeah. today. But I might be able to add a little to the Beaver. Oh, life. yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought this for you. And what you can is do it? with it what you want. Okay, he's walking over giving me some <laughs> st- random jar that says... Oh, my. Beaver rub. Oh, wow. This is beaver rub. Seasoning. I believe World I brought that famous. home from uh, Canada. Yeah, you did. Was this from uh, uh, your, just your trip to Vancouver? Yeah, yeah. So you can rub it on your beaver. You can't I barbecue can. a beaver. Is that the thing? It's I I think it's maybe it's a brand name, beaver rub. <laughs> I think I can rub this all over my beaver. Thank right, you, well, Danny. So you have my, nice well, it's you. a gift, so you can rub it anything you want. All right. Uh, We do have so much coming up, including music news. Alice Cooper has a very cool new project in entertainment. There is a new movie coming out that will likely make Danny and his wife very angry. I'm mad already. Mm -hmm. Plus, you guys listening, you can win a pair of Mariners home game tickets next at sports.
Starting with music news, the Arizona State Lottery has announced it will be releasing a special lotto ticket. Are these tickets? Ew, I don't want to scratch out. <laughs> Who knows what you'll get? <laughs> It'll start on August 7th and run through Halloween. The top six prizes, $50,000 each. The second prize, you could get some rock memorabilia, VIP tickets, and pre-show party access to his concerts. That's cool. You know, it's weird about it. He's not from there. To he be isn't... celebrated that much by the city now, he brings in a lot of stuff to the state of Arizona. He's They love him, and he loves them, but it seems like you've got to be born there to get this kind of yeah. stuff. He moved there as a young child. He was born in Detroit, moved to Arizona as a young child, and lives there to this yeah. day. He owns a business called uh, Cooperville. It's a baseball or sports-themed uh, bar. I've been there. And a couple, yeah, a couple yeah. of other things. So he brings a lot to the town. Yeah, so he still has a lot of love for Arizona, and so much so that uh, he's got his own lottery ticket. Illinois, and specifically uh, uh, Chicago, gave me a plaque uh, of uh, Chicago fav- favored son or something like that. Now that that was a big deal because I'm not from there. I'm from Philadelphia. Yeah. And then I realized, it's a plaque. They didn't <laughs> buy me dinner. They didn't romance me. Not no a massage. Key to the nothing city. like that. Kids, keys to the city, overrated. They yeah. don't unlock anything. Yeah, right. They're huge. <laughs> Uh, so they've got this uh, free concert Friday series happening at Snoqualmie Casino yeah. tonight because it is Friday. This is in the outdoor Mountain View Plaza. Danny Bonaducci will be there tonight, and we encourage you to join him. Yeah. You're going to be there from 7 till 9. That guy from uh, uh, Counting Cars, which is probably my favorite car show, uh, he's got a band with Count 77. Yep. They're playing tonight. Pretty cool. They are playing tonight, and uh, that show is on the History Channel, gets uh, rave reviews, but so does his band, Counts 77. You can get all the info at snocasino.com, but Danny Bonaducci there from 7 till 9 this evening. I think that guy is a lot smarter than he looks. Wait, let me rephrase. <laughs> no, but he's, you know, he's my age, and he's, he's just into this whole certain vibe. The bandana he, on the head. Yeah, but he owns the place that makes millions of dollars in cars, custom cars, and big celebrities go yeah. there. And then down the street is his very own nightclub, which he built so his band would have a place to play. And inside the nightclub is his very own tattoo parlor. That's and nice. that's just the start of what this guy's got going on. Wow. It's an awesome place to see a show, too. Like, their ballroom at, at Snoqualmie Casino is beautiful. But Mountain View Plaza, it's just awesome. such a killer view. The cou- In the back, they have couches and stuff. <laughs> it's really cool. So they call it Mountain View Plaza. It's because you actually do have a view of yeah, you do. the mountain. Yeah, you do. That's awesome. It's all forested. And, like, I mean, obviously, you're not in the forest. But just the view, it's spectacular. Nice. Will and Grace have another famous face joining the show. Chelsea Handler has been cast as Donna Zimmer, a high-powered client of Grace's who starts dating her bitter sister, Janet, played by Mary McCormick, who is also returning to the comedy. She just began production on the sitcom yesterday. Will and Grace currently up for five Emmy nominations. Wow. And the series has already been renewed for a third season. Is it up for at least original sitcom? (laughs) <laughs> Only not because I don't think it's funny. I do think it's funny. It's just all these reboots and stuff. Yeah. Man, think of something. Season two is 18 episodes, and it starts Thursday, August 4th. Well, you're right, Danny. It's all about re- It's all about reboots. It's all about reimagining stuff that's already been done before, and it's happening again to Home Alone. To Home Alone? Ryan Reynolds is set to attach... I'm sorry, is attached to this new project, produce and potentially appear in Stoned Alone. (laughs) Okay. Okay. That's different. Yeah, it is different. They kind of had me and then they kind of lost me. Now maybe they have me again. This is an adult version of Home Alone. A weed growing loser who misses the plane for his holiday ski trip uh, makes the best of things by getting high. Paranoia sets in when he believes he hears someone break into his house. Turns out the thieves have broken in. He tries to thwart the thieves and defend his castle all while being completely stoned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I thought go straight with the uh, Home Alone and you're that kid grown up. They look alike, right? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Enough to pull it off that this is what he looks like 20 years later, uh, for sure. Well, they are just calling it a an adult version of Home Alone. He's just super high. All he wants is his very own cheese pizza. Yep. <laughs> 
And a lot of movies are opening up this weekend at 9 o'clock. Derek is going to tell us what the reviewers have to say about all of those movies. Cool. Plus, right now, Derek will tell you guys listening how to get free movie tickets. That's right. KZOK has teamed up with Adam Tickets for Free Movie Friday. Free Movie, movie Friday. Friday. The Adam Tickets app lets you browse movie titles, buy tickets, invite friends, pre-order concessions all from your phone, and skip the lines. Today, Adam Tickets wants to give you a chance for free movie tickets. Just text them now. Text WIND to Adam1. That's 28661 for your chance to win. Standard data and text message rates may apply. Thank you. Fun stuff. That's what you do with your Mission Impossible, Danny. If you want to make sure that you don't, uh, you know, the crowds are out, you don't want to miss out on getting a ticket, buy it in advance through Adam Tickets. Okay. Good thinking. Jeff Goldblum is partnering with National Geographic for a docu-series that explores the extraordinary stories behind the world's most ordinary things. It is called The Curiosity of Jeff Goldblum. (laughs) (laughs) I've got to agree with you, Danny. (laughs) Now, this is a 12-part docu-series which will examine the things we encounter daily, like balloons, ice cream, cereal, and toilet paper. They'll ex- <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> that one. It'll explore the backstory of how they're made, the impact they have on daily life, and the surprising connection and revelations to all of those things that are seemingly ordinary items. Here, here's my problem with it, <laughs> and that is Jeff Goldwyn, as far as I can tell, can no longer be normal. He he's plays weird. the he's you know how he's elevated from Jurassic Park for the 25 years to getting crazier and crazier and crazier. Well, that seems to be the way I've seen him on talk shows and stuff. And he talks uh, yeah. like this. It's really super weird. I, I do agree he is embracing the quirky. Yeah. But maybe that's been Oh, I thought you said right. embracing the quirky, which I thought, that's weird. But maybe it's <laughs> it's good for a show like this. It is seemingly a little quirky. All right. Jeff Goldblum, uh, incidentally, is also working on his jazz album, which is what you are hearing behind Guy's us. super talented. Yeah. Just a weirdo. Speaking of people who are super talented, but a weirdo. Yeah. We are throwing Danny Bonaducci a birthday party. As well you should. It's about time. I'm not appreciated around here. We are inviting all of you guys to help us celebrate another year of the Dooch Man. Friday, August 10th, we are going to be doing a live morning show broadcast. And we encourage you to join us for some or all of it. 5.30 5.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. We're going to be at Chandler's Crab House in South Lake Union doing the regular show, but we're also going to be having a lot of stuff to give away, uh, music, special appearances, free breakfast, a cup of coffee from Schwartz Brothers Bakery, and so much more. All about celebrating you, Danny. Yeah, well, I deserve it. It's about time. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> do. But here, here's what I will tell you. What's that? I can't believe I'm going to say this. What? <sighs> I will be declining all gifts. You will? <laughs> you will? Yeah. Okay. Will you re-gift them if I give you something? Will you, like, toss it out to somebody in the crowd? Do you want me to? <laughs> sure. All right. Fun. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> but uh, all I'm really saying is don't, there's no reason to bring a gift. Yeah. Show up. That's the thing. Gotcha. Be, and I, and uh, we'll buy you breakfast. Yeah. Think, right? That's really cool. Yeah, we'll buy you breakfast. You guys can get all the details. Plus, we encourage you to RSVP now by going to kzok.com slash Danny's birthday. This is free. 100% free. But we would like you to RSVP, kzok.com slash Danny's birthday. Got to see who's going to be there. Yeah. Crazy Mary's going to be there. She told you yesterday, right, Paul? Yeah, I ran into a couple of people in this building, listeners picking up a prize, and they said, hell, we're excited for Danny's birthday party. Can't wait. Yep. I think Yo will make the drive up from Olympia. Oh, will she ever top down or up? Or... <laughs> yeah, I don't know, that jo- I don't know how her joke of topless. Oh, top just, down, will she topless. be topless? Yeah. Uh, Lenny and Tacoma, you know, we got to get eyeballs on everybody listening oh, who is. You've going never to be. lived yet. Lenny's birthday salmon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bunch of candles stuck in it in weird places. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at sports. 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 Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1 800 DUI away. That's 1 800 DUI away. The Mariners were off yesterday, but play tonight against the Angels. First pitch, 707 on Root Sports. We're going to see Wade LeBlanc pitching versus Andrew Heaney. Now, it is an away game, which means we are going to play an in studio version of Mariners KZOK Music Trivia. We're going to play you a song clip right now. And if you can tell us the title, the artist, and the year it came out, you can win tickets to an upcoming Mariners game. Derek, hit the clip.
I think I actually know this one. You do? I can never get the year. I know this one. Yeah. You know the year on this one? Oh, I don't. I know the artist and the song, and then I'd guess it the year. All right. Well, hopefully you guys listening also know the year, the artist, and the song title. Call right now, 800-252-1025. The first person to correctly tell us will win tickets to an upcoming game. Well, we are nearing the trade deadline in baseball, and there was a flurry of activity yesterday, including the Chicago Cubs acquiring friend of Danny Bonaducci, Cole Hamels. Yeah. Big trade with Texas. The Texas Rangers used to play for Philadelphia, and he is now playing for the Chicago Cubs. Oh, I think you'll like it there. Indeed. Uh, the Yankees got pitcher Jay Happ from Toronto. That was the good news. The bad news for Yankee fans and, of course, a ton of fantasy baseball players. Aaron Judge, a fracture in his right wrist. Aaron Judge is the beast. He's like, what, six foot seven, hitting home run bombs like crazy. And he got hit by a pitch. And it's a chip fracture. Ooh. In what part of his body? His wrist. Ooh, poor bit. Oh, and he's a pitcher? No, he's a batter. Oh, he's a batter, batter. Well, he's Still, a it sucks. Fielder. You're a professional athlete. And you yep. had a broken oh, wrist. Yeah. So he underwent an MRI and a CT scan. They said it doesn't look like he needs surgery, but he'll be out for a month. Wow, my goodness gracious. At least. Yep. I'm surprised the guy six foot seven is a good hitter. He is hitting. It's a lot of momentum, bombs. so I can see it going out of the park. Yeah. But it's also a great deal of distance to the ball. You know, right. if it's in the strike zone. Right. And so much of batting is about wrist speed, so that could affect him long-term, too, having Ugh, issues terrible. with his wrist. I mean, I hate the Yankees, but I don't wish that on anyone, and he's exciting to watch. He's just a phenom. Did he make $100 million last year? Uh, he's a kid, so this is his second season, and I don't know what they locked him down for, but a lot less. Than they're going to be paying him. Than they're going to be paying him, for sure. The Seattle Seahawks placed four-time Pro Bowl safety Cam Chancellor on the pup list, and we are officially list? saying goodbye to him. Physically unable to play, perform? Perform, yeah. yeah. But isn't that a big, fat lie? No, he broke his neck, so he can't play. Oh. Oh. Cam okay. Chancellor, right? Yep. Yeah. Cam Chancellor. No, I watched that happen. I thought it was. I thought we were talking about somebody else. Who's not showing up for practice? Earl Thomas. Okay, that's who I thought we were talking about. Okay. Earl Thomas is not showing up, but he is physically able to do so. Right. So he's not on anybody anybody's list except maybe the S list. Uh, not the pup list. Because <laughs> now that I know it exists, I think I'm going to say it all the time. Yeah. Ow! Oh, put me on the pup list. Also, Seahawks have waived Malik McDowell. He was the one who was hurt in an ATV crash back in 2017. He never actually saw the field and is not. He suffered a really extreme concussion. Never going to play for the Seahawks. Cam Chancellor, sadly, it looks like uh, the career is over. He didn't use the word retirement, but they told him, you can't play football, man. Wow, yeah. LeBron James continues to expand his entertainment profile. HBO has picked up the James Maverick Carter barbershop-style talk show called The Shop. This is going to feature James Maverick Carter, Snoop Dogg, Draymond Green, Candace Parker, ODB, and John Stewart. How oh, is ODB oh, not dead? <laughs> Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, that one. All right, never mind. Oh, I love that guy. And why is John Stewart in this particular barber shop? I am perplexed. And so, do they? Uh, do you get in the barber chair and you have a conversation? Yep. Three episodes. Well, uh, it has been given. Let's see, is it twelve episodes? And. Uh, Let's see, John Stewart will ask LeBron James how he gives kids peace of mind and two episodes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll watch it. I'm curious. Oh, I'll, I'll, like I said, three episodes. I'll watch it and figure out how do you, are you interviewing the guy whose hair you're cutting? Because now you're directly behind him and he yeah. can't really see you. Are you interviewing into a mirror? Is it the guy next to you in another chair? And you, it's all, ah, it's stupid. It sounds like a great idea till you go to shoot it. <laughs> yeah. Well, in uh, uh, Luke Cage, which is my, my new TV obsession, the most of the first season takes place in the barbershop. And like that movie, Barbershop, you know, a lot of conversation happens. So one dude could be doing a shave or giving somebody a haircut, and then it's the dudes around him in the conversation that's hilarious. Three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> you got the clippers running, so that's like messing up the audio. The audio, to absolutely. All right, so you guys remember the drama surrounding Lamar Odom. Yeah. 
He was the one married to Khloe Kardashian. Okay, they, I he, thought he was the Broadway singer. How many <laughs> people are named Odom? Uh, this is the one who died in the brothel in uh, Nevada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they brought him back brought to life. Brought him back to life. Yep. Well, he is divorced now from Khloe Kardashian, and he is allegedly sober, clean and sober. Um, well, he has now announced, I have some good news to share with you. I am returning to basketball. Good for him if it's legitimate. He is going to play professional basketball in China. So he's 38, but says he's got some more gas in the tank. And he is headed to China. Yeah, good for him. And I think that, you know, I think that's kind of an interesting thing. If he embraces it rather than I'm so washed up, I'm playing basketball in China as he's, wow, I'm playing basketball in China. How crazy is this? You do that. I think he's got a good few years. Sunday, the Seattle Sounders play NYCFC. Match time is 2 p.m. And the Mariners on the road facing the L.A. Angels. 7.07 start time on Root Sports. We played an in-studio version of Mariners KZOK Music Trivia. How it works is we play you a song clip. You need to tell us the title, the artist, and the year it came out. Uh, Carl in University Place knew the answer. Derek, play the clip again. All right, we all know it's... Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Yeah. We all know it's living, living on, on a prayer. prayer. I can't tell if you're quizzing us or not. What's the year, Danny? <laughs> I'm going to go with 89. Paul? 80, 88. Oh, 86. Oh, oh wow. Really close. I think this is, honest to God, the first one I've ever gotten right. <laughs> the year <laughs> always uh, gets me. But Carl in University Place, he knew all the answers, and he is going to the Jeep winner's window in our lobby to pick up tickets to what, Derek? He won tickets for the game on August First at 110 versus the Houston Astros, which just happens to be Mariners Baseball Card Pack Day. Mariners, Mariners Baseball Card Pack Day. Come watch the Mariners do battle with the Houston Astros on August 1st at 110 p.m. And if you're one of the first 20,000 fans, you could pick up a special Mariners Baseball Card Pack from Tops. Get your tickets at Mariners.com. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Carl. And it's a big weekend for the Seattle Mariners. Your next chance to win tickets will be Tuesday morning, right around the same time. And sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-OA. Well, we save the best for last. At 7.20 this morning, we are playing the last game of Sea Fair or Sea Fair. Play it, and you can win uh, tickets to Sea Fair. Yeah, we're talking about a video that has gone viral of a boy using a Nerf dart gun to pull out his sister's loose tooth. Yeah, I like it. Mom filmed the whole thing, and it was successful, and the kids were roaring. They were just rolling around on the floor laughing. Just, It was such a fun, cute moment for brother and sister. And I was telling you guys that I have really vivid memories of my brothers tying my tooth to the doorknob. Right with dental floss and yeah. slam in the door. Only it wasn't quite as funny because I slammed into the door and smashed right, my pulled, face in. pulled you forward. Yeah. You didn't actually have any loose teeth. They just <laughs> tied it to <laughs> a fully grown teeth that weren't coming out. But I mean, I did grow up with two older brothers and I don't know, I have a lot of fun memories of it. Like, obviously it's not all sunshine and roses. You know, I told you my brother pulled my arm out of my socket once trying to drag me up the stairs. That. That wasn't one of the fun memories. So, so far, you've had rope tied to your teeth that smashed your (laughs) face into the door, and then he pulled your arm out of the socket. When do we get to the happy memories? My probably favorite memory of my brothers was them teaching me how to ride a bike. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Yeah. And I could still see that bike, my blue bike, and there was one, like, in the distance, and there was one holding me up in that moment. I can still feel that, like, euphoria of when you realize like you're pedaling on your own. Yeah. And it was so fun and just like a happy moment that I don't think I would have had had I not had older brothers. Yeah, that's a distinct possibility. I had to uh, work a little bit to get to happy memories with my my siblings. It just yeah. wasn't like that in, in my house. But then I thought about it, I was a little older. I wasn't a kid, I was maybe 13. And my brother Anthony, and I, this is so weird, we did nothing together. And Anthony and I would take my dad's Carmen Ghia or my mom's Carmen Ghia, I don't know whose Carmen Ghia was, and we'd go and we'd drive around in these little networks in the in neighborhoods, rather, in the valley, of the San Fernando Valley, and we'd drive around till we were impossibly lost. And then we'd smoke a whole big giant reefer. And then every single time we did it, 
the funny would go out of being lost and we'd start being paranoid and flipping out and then we'd find our way home and we'd do it again. So I got to say, uh, running around lost and high with my big brother, Anthony, was one of the more fun times I had in my youth, wow. at least at my home. Yeah. And you were 13. Yeah. Oh, you started early. Started what early? Drugs. I don't like the way it sounds that way, but yeah, no, I, before that, 13 was not Thir- my certain first time, no. Wow. Well, you guys listening, do you have a fun or funny childhood sibling memory to share with us? Uh, This video is super cute of brother and sister pulling out her loose tooth with a Nerf dart gun. What's your story? Call us 800-252-1025 or text in 90627. So uh, I, I was going to say everybody's seen the video by now, but I don't know if that's true. If you haven't seen the video by now, you should. Uh, a young boy attaches his sister's loose tooth to a Nerf rocket and pulls it out of her mouth, and uh, everybody was happy about the outcome, which raises the question, what is one of your funny or just fun childhood memories with your siblings? 1-800-252-1025. You can text 90627. Good morning to Jeremiah in Seattle. Hey, Jeremiah. Hey, good morning, sunshine. Good morning, sweetheart. What's up? Uh, I got a kid sister about 11 years younger than me. Uh, my pops at the time, oh, he had dentures, and whenever he'd try and eat something hard, you know, like corn on the cob and that, he'd just sit and shave it off the cob and that, and he'd take his dentures out put them on teeth. My sister seen this, and she was very young, and she was just in awe that he took his whole set of teeth out of his mouth put them on the table. Well, I asked her to go do something. And so just to excuse her away from the table. And you know a set of old wind-up teeth that oh, yeah. had her like mad? Oh, yeah. She'd come back, <laughs> and they were just set up just right. The minute something got moved, like a, 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 the security's teeth, they just chatter all over the table. She got up screaming and ran, and to this day, I think she still has a fear of phobia for dentures. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. Using the the uh, cuties, that's the manufacturer of a lot of the uh, uh, the you know the, the novelty items. Gotcha. So the cuties made it. The, the, they chatter. They come at uh-huh. you. Those teethers. Oh, that's funny. What is your uh, favorite brother or sister memory? We are uh, loving to hear your stories right now at eight hundred two five two one zero two five. Let's talk to Katie in Tukwila. Hey, Katie. How are you guys doing? We're doing very well, thank you. What do you got? Uh, I have an older brother, and he's six years older than me, and it's just the two of us. And apparently, as kids, we decided that playing bowls was the way to go. And what you do is you would sit on the ground on your hands and knees and charge at each other and hit your heads together. Oh, <laughs> That's a, wow. that is a, a and, terrible it game. Gets better. It gets better because he now has five children. I don't have any. So I'm the lovely aunt that comes over, and I taught all of his children how to play bowls, and he just sits there in the living room glaring at me and goes, I can't believe you remember. Uh, well, he can't remember because of the brain damage from playing uh, bowls with you. He wasn't as good at it. It's amazing how rough you could play with your siblings. No, don't I know. You know, just how many times people got hurt playing games. I mean, it was all uh, trying to be fun. But- Everybody in my family, the kids and maybe my dad included, has gotten stitches because of something else one of the other kids did. So I you bet. play rough till your shoulder comes out, till you're, you know, you need stitches. Yep. You know, kids play rough. Yeah, we've got some texts into 90627. My two older brothers would have me climb up a ladder up to the roof and jump off, and they would catch me. Oh my that's gosh. That Becky. sounds safe. Pretty yeah. dumb idea. And another one, uh, when I was eight years old, my little sister ganged up all of her friends and made them tackle me until I couldn't breathe. Oh, that sounds like super fun. Oh, Some okay. rough house, a little rough house. That reminds me, my brother Anthony or John, some brother that I'm officially related to, did the pass out game with me where oh, I'd get down wow. really as low as I could and hyperventilate for 30 yep. seconds and then they'd squeeze you and then you'd wake up going, wow, where am I? Yep. Always a fun game. <laughs> 800-252-1025. Share your funny uh, childhood story with your brother or sister. Let's hear from Anya and Lacey. Hey, Anya. Hey, how's it going? It's all good. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, um, I have, in my family, we have eight kids, four brother, four boys and four girls. Yeah. And um, so we used to play, we lived off of a golf course, right? So um, we would go out there and play ditch them. So we would split up and then we'd have a tree as base. And so we'd all like um, play, it was kind of like a tag. And then my brothers would um, collect tadpoles from the golf course and we'd bring them to our backyard. And then all the frogs would, um, they'd come into frogs and we'd have frogs in our yard. It was fun. 
That sounds well, it, fun. It sounds fun. Yeah. It sounds like something that Amy and I say, and that is good, clean fun. Yeah. Like when we go and play pickleball, totally good, clean fun right, playing yeah. pickleball. Yeah, and that it sounds very wholesome and like uh, the suburbs. By the way, at any point, Paul, you're the producer. Yeah. At any point, do we need to say, don't try this at home? Because people are playing bowls <laughs> and jumping off roofs and stuff. Yeah, at that point right there. I'm just going to say I, I right thank now. Thank you for doing it. Totally don't try this at home. Don't try it at home. Although playing on the golf course, you can try that Lovely. at home. If you happen to live on a golf course. <laughs> you're not breaking and entering. <laughs> yeah, don't try that at home. Hi, Lynn and Linwood. Hey, Lynn. Oh, my gosh. You ready? Yeah. My my big brother, Bill Thrasher from Thrasher's Corner. Sure. sure. Our, mo- our, mother, our mother used to bake for a living, right? So her bag of walnuts came up disappearing. And gee willikers, our brother Bill went upstairs in their bedroom, gee ate willikers. the whole thing. He went upstairs, ate the whole bag of walnuts. <laughs> no. And then he went number two all over the whole oh, damn house. Oh, oh, my God. You know, I wondered where that was going. <laughs> well, uh, he wasn't thinking we got to do the who stole your nuts jokes. And uh, uh, now just let Lynn tell her story. And sure enough, she does not need our help. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Renee in Seattle, do you have a funny sibling memory to share with us? Lynn needs somebody. So. <laughs> too, we have pictures of um, my sister and I putting curlers in my little brother's hair. Aww. And then later on, he became our um, hairstylist, and he's really good. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, that's funny. He's actually a real live licensed hairstylist? Yeah, he is. He owns his own salon, and he still cuts my hair to this day. That seems like the that's coolest job cool. in the whole world. Yeah. Hairstyle. You wash ladies' hair. You say subjective <laughs> stuff to them. <laughs> is that like, what you think happens? <laughs> yes, it's totally what happens. Jody in Tacoma, do you have a, a fun sibling memory to share with us? I do. So I was four, and I think my brother was three. I don't know where my parents were. I think they were sleeping or in another room somewhere. And I remember we were hungry, so I grabbed a loaf of bread, a jar of peanut butter, and a jar of jelly, jumped into his crib with him, and started to feed my brother peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I guess by the time my mom walked in, we had peanut butter all over ourselves, all over the crib, all over the wall. Ew. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of you. Does anybody remember when the peanut butter and jelly used to come in the same jar? Oh, I've it seen was that, striped yeah. like a zebra. I've so seen weird. that before. Like, how you know? What is that saving you? You can not wash one butter knife that you're gonna make toast with. <laughs> right. I thought it was cool again. Paul, what's your uh, favorite sibling memory? Uh, when I was really young, I, uh, it was before my mom remarried, so I was maybe three years old, and uh, it was Christmas time. And my sister and I thought it would be fun and nice for my mom to have uh, snow for Christmas. But we lived in California, so there's no snow, but we did have baby powder. And it's amazing when your mom's in the other room for a couple of minutes, what you can do with baby powder all over the living room, all over the couch. Holy moly. The carpet, uh, the Christmas tree. Christmas tree looked fantastic. I'll bet. (laughs) You know, the frosted (laughs) edges. Yeah, there's a lot of baby powder. And we had two, two little containers of baby powder, one each. And we just went crazy with the snow. Was she furious, Mom? Uh, she was, but like when we explained to her what we were doing, we we're giving you a, a white Christmas, Mom. Aww, she she thought it was pretty sweet. Oh, I still beat you. <laughs> and now we do it every year. It's our Christmas tradition. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> no, really? no, oh. that would be awesome though. We used well, to because they this... frost trees. You can buy them sure, pre-frosted. Yeah. yeah. We used to play a lot of games in my neighborhood, and my older brothers were super good sports because I was so much younger than them. But we used to play light, uh, what is it? flashlight tag? Yeah. So it, in dark, you, everyone would get flashlights, and you got spotted with a flashlight. Or we used to play number war, where you'd wear four numbers on your forehead, and you'd play capture the flag. But if somebody saw your numbers, they'd call out your numbers, and that you were tagged out. It's a lot of work to play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we used to play with toys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't. You know, we used to play, homemade numbers on your forehead. We used to play kick the can, which was kind of neat because it didn't seem like my family at all to join up. Uh, with You know, my neighborhood, they all rode unicycles. It was all weird. Uh, but kick the can was a weird game. I guess the rules vary, but all you'd get to do is kick the can as far as you could. And until the guy, all the time it took the guy to go and get, the guy was it, to go get the can and bring it back. Yeah. That's when you ran and hot and it. Oh. So, yeah, and that was fun with that little, with my siblings and my neighbors. What a fun. What about Joe and Everett? Do you have a fun sibling memory? Yes. Uh, my brother, who's 13 years older than I am, uh, he took me out one night up around Kingsgate when 405, that was where the freeway ended. And I was cutting down pine trees up there so we could have a Christmas tree at his house. Wow. He he had been laid off from mowing. 
I uh, I never thought of. I mean, I've thought of it, I guess. But to go out in the mountains and cut your own Christmas tree, yeah. it sounds cool. But I know in advance before I get up there, I'll hate it the <laughs> second I get up in a mountain with a knife or whatever I'm using to cut down a tree. A nice I would to hope do for his brother. That. A knife. <laughs> Alan Tacoma, what's your fun sibling memory? Uh, my younger brother and I, when we were oh, probably grade school age, uh, we got a hold of some lipstick out of the bathroom, and we colored up each other and the couch. And oh. that Dad had to replace the couch. It oh. was so bad. Yeah, that, that uh, stuff That's just smears. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at the time. We need to get ready to play one final round of Sea Fair or Sea Fair. Sea Fair or Sea Fair. This is you guys' chance to win a pair of tickets to the Sea Fair Weekend Festival, watch the Albert Lee Appliance Cup hydroplane races, and the Boeing Sea Fair Air Show, the 3rd through the 5th Genesee Park on Lake Washington. If you want to play and win these tickets, call right now, 800-252-1025. Okay, where we are playing our final round of Sea Fair or Sea Fair. This is your chance to win tickets to the Sea Fair Weekend Festival, August 3rd through the 5th, Genesee Park on Lake Washington. Here's how it works you will have to listen to Danny's definitions and tell us is he talking about the word Sea Fair or Sea Fair? All right. Our contestant is Bill in Issaquah. Hey, Bill, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yes, sir. Very nice. And uh, do you understand the rules of the game? Yes, sir. All right, then listen carefully, son. This sea fair or sea fair is a visual representation of the smallest unit of spoken sound. One of 26 used in the English language. It falls directly between B and D. <laughs> and I certainly hope that you can tell us what is it? Sea fair or sea fair? Would that be C? That would be C. <laughs> I was really nervous. Bill's Bill wasn't going to get it. <laughs> that I is actually correct. was stumped until at least halfway through. Yeah, I was. I oh well done, Bill. Uh, Bill, Thank con you. congratulations, buddy. You're going to the Jeep Winner's Window in our lobby to pick up your tickets to Seafair Weekend, August 3rd through the 5th, Genesee Park, Lake Washington. You can get all the details and the tickets online at seafair.com. We still have a lot of show coming up, including the big news of the day, which is next. It is the big news of the day, and it's brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE or go online to GoldbergJones.com. Well, none of us here uh, in listening areas of Washington won the Mega Millions. Right. None of us in this room won Mega Millions except for me, and that was only for 10 bucks. No, the big winning ticket was sold in San Jose. Now we are finding out that the owners of the San Jose liquor store that sold that winning ticket are getting a million dollars. Wow, that's great. So I mean, remember, I don't know why I care. It's not me, but <laughs> all right. This is like a win-win. The uh, owners get a million dollars, plus that million dollars will not be subtracted from the jackpot winner's earnings. Which is good, I think. I just always assumed it came out of the, the big pile. The big pile of cash that that person's huh. about to roll around in. Yeah, I no, I always thought it came from the lotto committee or whatever yeah, right. it was. I didn't think it came, you know, it kind of changes the definition of a winner if you need to give a million dollars away right yeah. away. <laughs> well, if they take the lump sum, the final pre tax amount, $320.5 million. Yeah, I had mine divvied up to who I would give, and I figured just a million dollars each check. And it was uh, both my brothers and my sister, a niece and a nephew. Uh, whoever Amy's family is, so I think I'd be at about $16 million, and then I would go spend it all on me. <laughs> <laughs> the There is a dog in Colombia who has sniffed out a record amount of drugs throughout her career. Oh, okay. This is a dog who works with the counter-narcotics police force, and they say this German shepherd has been removed from the police force to ensure her safety. Sure. Oh, the cartels want to kill the dog? That's the yep. one they put a hit on. They put a hit out on this German shepherd. Oh. She has found... I don't know why it's worse. Like, normally they put a hit out on a person. For some reason, I'm more upset about the dog. 
I'm yeah, with you. I think it's terrible. It makes it, you know, a cute little animal. People are bad. Animals yeah. aren't usually bad by nature. This dog, I put a hit on like a rattlesnake, but a puppy? It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. This dog has sniffed out about 10 tons of the Urabanos drug gang's cocaine. I think that means you're in the bathroom. <laughs> That's Urabanos. The Urabanos. <laughs> yeah, they're in the bathroom. <laughs> this drug cartel is continue, considered Colombia's most powerful criminal organization. I didn't know they were still big rock stars in the drug world in Colombia. I thought yep. the Colombia government it really came down on them. Some, almost all the really bad neighborhoods are now okay neighborhoods. So this adorable puppy named Sombra, or Shadow in English, has been moved to the airport for her safety. They said she, uh, they put a hit out on this dog, and they know it's not safe for her to continue her work. You know what happens sometimes in, not just in the evil underground, but in the world, but in this case in the evil underground, if they successfully killed that dog, the people would totally turn on them. And one of the things you do in Colombia is you give out a bunch of money and you build playgrounds sure, and you yeah. redo the schools and stuff like that mm -hmm. and the people love you and they hide you and it makes it difficult for the cops to find you. You kill a puppy. I met all those same guys are going to say, okay, no mas. Yeah. Well, that's what I would say. I don't know why I'd speak Spanish. That seems odd. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Apprentice contestant turned Trump staffer Omarosa is releasing a new tell-all memoir called Unhinged. And yes, it is about working in President Donald Trump's White House. I thought it was for sure about her being her. That chick is yeah. unhinged in a big way. Is this her second one, or did she just take a really long time to write it? Took a really long time to write it. So this is the first tell-all book about her from her yeah. uh, and about. But her she's time. written a book before, hasn't she? Yeah, but not about her time in the White House. I remember right after she left the White House, she was all over the TV saying, "I'm writing a book and yep. I'm going to tell the whole story." But that was a long time ago. Well, Gallery. It's, got, it's a hassle to write a book. I, I mean, know. I've only written the one, but it it took me six hard months. Yeah. Gallery Books announced yesterday that it will publish the explosive, jaw-dropping book on August 14th. The publisher said in a statement, a stunning tell-all and takedown from a strong, intelligent woman who took every name and number, unhinged as a must-read for any concerned citizen. You know what she should call it? She should call it treason. <laughs> yeah. Well, she has talked about this for a while. She was on Celebrity Big Brother, and she's been ever since that show ended, busy working on this book, as I said, August 14th. Yeah, I don't care for this lady, to be honest with you. No, neither, but I still want to find out what's in that Absol book. You know, the, there's the big scandal, uh, allegedly, in Russia with uh, Trump private time with hookers and what he's hip to. Mm -hmm. I, I desperately need to find out what that's about. <laughs> yeah. Like, if any of that's true. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, his stock, it's hard for his stock to go down with me. If I find out that was true, I'll just think weirder of him, but... <laughs> The story of Phil Knight and the creation of Nike is getting the biopic treatment via Netflix. They have picked up the rights to Phil Knight's best-selling memoir, Shoe Dog, and the people who were behind the People vs. O.J. Simpson American Crime Story are going to make the adaptation. Now, this uh, book, Shoe Dog, was published in 2016, and it has been on the New York Times bestseller list ever since. This tells the story of Knight, fresh out of business school, borrowed 50 bucks from his dad, and made Nike. So, okay, can I just say, every time I hear that, I think shenanigans. Yeah. He borrowed 50 bucks. You can't get the cab from where you are to where you want to go for the 50 bucks. I, You know, uh, Trump, I, you know, I, married, I, I borrowed a very small loan, $1 million from my dad. No, 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 no. Billion dollar empire you got from your dad. Like Everybody wants to say I had nothing. All these movie stars, I had $3 in my pocket and a mouthful of spit, and I went to Hollywood. <laughs> He borrowed 50 bucks from his dad. He was selling shoes from the trunk of his car in 1963. He grossed $8,000 in his first year. Nike now has annual sales over $36 billion. Nice. It's a pretty amazing story, and Netflix will be giving it yeah. the biopic. Uh, I know next to nothing about this guy, but I don't need to because he's got a documentary coming out about him. But I, I root for him. It's a great story. Yeah. Forget birthday cake. Today is all about... Birthday Donuts at Krispy Kreme. They're celebrating their 81st birthday, offering customers 12 original glazed donuts for a dollar. A dozen donuts for a dollar. It's quite the deal. Yeah. 
And you can also get limited edition glazed confetti birthday cake donuts. Okay. So happy birthday to Krispy Kreme. Yeah. Yeah, 81. Yeah, why not? I feel like we could have been tighter, really hung out more. (laughs) I have some sad news to report. All right. This morning we are finding out the world's oldest person, Chio Miyako, has died. Well, unless it was torture, why is that bad news? She is 117. 117 years old. Yeah, it seems okay to me that she's dead. Yeah, you can't be the world's oldest person forever. For very long. It's a short-term job. It is, and you are are always concerned to announce the next one because you know it's not going to last long. It's like a broken hip, man. You know you're going soon. However, the oldest person was 117. Now the oldest person, somebody named Kane Tanaka, a 115-year-old woman. Right now? Also living in Japan. What what is up with the Japanese? The diet, right? All the, the fish diet. and the yeah, fish oils is, fish and all oil. that kind of stuff. Yeah, I thought eating white rice wasn't good for you, but Japan is clearly <laughs> defying that. You know, they uh, there's there's the the white rice and stuff like that in the fish. I was surprised to see a commercial for fish oil pills. Yeah, that said, and no longer is that annoying odor. I didn't know your fa- you'd smell like you just ate fish if you took <laughs> yeah. fish oil capsules. If you take fish oil capsules or garlic capsules and then you burp. <laughs> It's not that isn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's your big news of the day, which is brought to you by Goldberg Jones. Divorce for men, 1-800-DIVORCE or online, goldbergjones.com. Uh, we do it, I believe, every Friday, and that's where you tell us where Sarah's beaver's been. If you know, you need to call 1-800-252-1025. Call us right now. Tell us where Sarah's beaver's been, and you'll win a pair of tickets to see Mission Impossible Fallout in theaters today. I do, do, do. <laughs> I do, do. <laughs> Looking around, all around town. Because says Beaver was on Patches of Clown. Hello, Sarah, won't you give me a clue? I'll find a beaver and I'll be calling you. Where, Where it says beaver? beaver, I gotta know. Where, Where it says, says Beaver. beaver. I gotta know where it says Beaver. I wanna win on Dennis' show on Crazy OK. Uh huh. That was awesome. You sure do, because your prize this week is a pair of tickets to see Mission Impossible Fallout in theaters today. We are all super excited about this movie. And let's see. Uh, the Beaver goes someplace new each week. Facebook.com slash Sarah's Beaver or KZOK.com to look at the delightful pictures. Let's see if Abe Simpson knows where she's been. Hey, what's up, Wayne? Hey, Abe Simpson. I mean, Abe's not Abe Simpson. Sarah's Beaver. Wow. <laughs> Abe doesn't know where Abe's been. <laughs> He's been drinking already. I get it. He's retired. Uh, it, it, was seeing, it was seeing staggering out of the brick and land on the midnight sun, ready to do some moose wrangling in Sicily, Alaska. <laughs> wow. It sounds it right. Sounds, it sounds right. The detail yeah. makes that. It's, yeah. it's got to be right. I'm sorry. That is incorrect, Wayne. But we do appreciate your call. You have to try again next week. JMP Wallop, do you know where Sarah's Beaver's been? Uh, I think uh, I saw Sarah's Beaver pretending she was in Sicily, Alaska. Yeah. Northern Exposure in Roslyn, Washington. That's, That's right. funny. Ooh, that yeah. is correct, there you go. Jay. She was pretending to be in Alaska but was right here in Washington in Roslyn. Jay, you are going to the Jeep Winner's Window in our lobby to pick up your passes to see Mission Impossible Fallout in theaters today. Thank you for playing, and I know we all want to know how that movie's doing in theaters. Derek will tell us just after 9.
Hey, I just want to let everybody know that our very own Paul will be at Car Toys in Linwood tomorrow from 11 to 1 for the 31st annual Car Toys tent sale. Dun, dun, dun. I love car toys. Oh, they're so fantastic. Because we all drive different cars around here, but we can have one thing in common. Hey, I want to do this. Where do I get that? Oh, car toys. They have everything. Right, and they're the pros. They've been doing this for so long, and they're such a, they're so big in the car electronics space that they're, they've got the best prices, and they really know how to do it. They, they do uh, installation for you, take care of that. I mean, you're not going to hook it up yourself, are you? No, God. God, no. no I'm not doing it. But anyway, uh, Paul will be out at Car Choice in Linwood from 11 till 1. Go on out, win prizes, say hi, and then go up to Paul all morning long and say, hey, it's Friday. And everybody will yell, I know what that means, and it will be fun. Cool prizes, too, because the guys at uh, Car Toys are going to give me some of their gear to give away. Nice. So nice. I've got this awesome new uh, deck from Alpine that I'm giving away with a big 9 inch uh, touchscreen. So that's really cool. Fantastic. And then I've uh, got entered to win for Foo Fighters tickets. So nice. please do come say hello. Uh, 11 to 1 tomorrow. Uh, I Just off I-5 on 196, the car toys in Linwood. Super. Uh, this morning was fantastic. Like the best morning ever because I saw Mars. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, there are I, other things you could pick, but Mars is nice. I woke up this morning and uh, my bedroom is on the bottom floor and my living room is on the top floor. Yeah. And I walk up the stairs and the first thing I see is the most gigantic moon ever. So then you threw the blanket over Matt? <laughs> 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 The moon was absolutely spectacular. It had this crazy color. It was sort of reddish. I think they're calling it a blood moon. Right. And it was reflecting off the Puget Sound. And then you look to the left and there's Mars and it was bright red and just huge. You could see it with the naked eye. I was so excited and I texted Paul and Danny and you guys said, Meh. Meh. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> I was I was in awe to the point where I went downstairs and woke up my husband. I never do that. Oh, He's okay. I didn't never, know. Never, ever, ever, ever. I do it four times a morning. Honey, wake up. Where are my socks? There's the moon. Am I on fire? <laughs> no, honest to God, I never, ever wake up, Matt. And I said, you need to come upstairs and see this. And he did. And he said, that's spectacular. I hate you. I'm going back to bed. Yeah, a normal reaction. <laughs> but I was absolutely amazed by it. I'm not sure why you guys were not. Because I'll tell you what I'm amazed by, young lady. Okay. Uh, there is a place where Amy and I, we've even figured out who's which relative is going to dump our ashes. It's in Cabo San Lucas. It's the world famous arch. Yeah. Right? So you take a boat out to the arch to look at it. We always do. It's like 20 bucks. We, we got there. Well, the first time we looked at it, we're waiting for this earth-shattering natural monument. And the guy says, ah, if you look over there, there's the Scooby-Doo rock. And I think, you're wrecking everything with your stupid, you know, whatever you're doing. I want to see the natural arch. And everybody's talking about the Scooby-Doo rock. I'm going to turn and I look. There's a huge rock that looks exactly like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> exactly. And that was years ago, and I'm still startled that there's a giant rock shooting out of the ocean that looks just like Scooby-Doo. So I'm amazed by Mars and the moon, and you're amazed by Scooby-Doo in Mexico. Scooby-Doo rock, yeah. 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 And I'm with Danny on this one. That sounds awesome. Yeah, they got Neptune's finger. <laughs> they got the arch. <laughs> give me Scooby-Doo or give me death. <laughs> You guys listening, what is something that amazes you? Share by calling 800-252-1025 right now, or you can always text in 90627. All righty. There is a question on the floor, ladies and gentlemen, and that is, Sarah saw the moon. I see the moon all the time. <laughs> she saw Mars. I don't see Mars all the time. But Paul and I said, man, what amazes you? I got the Scooby-Doo rock in Cabo San Lucas. It's amazing. 1-800-252-1025, or you can text 90627. Mike and Sultan, good morning. Hey, Mike. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Stinky Sexy Abaducci. And up? happy late anniversary, Paul. Well, thank Aww. you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, there's a place on the Oregon coast. I've been there a couple times, and I'm probably going back in October again. But sea lion caves. There are hundreds and hundreds of sea lions in these caves that just they don't shut up. They keep barking all the time. The stench is awful, but it's a fun place to go. So it's loud and it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. It looks fun. My dad's been down there uh, with my nephew a couple of times, and it looks really cool. You can explore these caves, and uh, all the sea lions are in there. We were talking about uh, something about this the other day. Seals or sea lions. 
uh, and then biting your fingers off. Somebody called in. There's a picture in my house of me feeding a 700-pound sea lion from my mouth. <laughs> yeah. And That's after crazy. it was done, because we're just at some corner, it's not a zoo, it's not a thing, it's some, these sea lions show up. Well, and it, I mean, Mike's right that it is really, really beautiful, but it does stink to high heaven. The one in San Francisco does too. Yeah, he calls me Stinky Dan. Maybe yeah. it's just a thing Mike does. I think does. he likes it. Yeah, yeah he <laughs> likes that stench. <laughs> Alec in Puyallup, what is something that amazes you? Uh, you know, I commute, and every day that I see Mount Rainier, wherever I'm at, man, it just uh, totally amazes me. I'm always in awe and in shock when I see it. I think it's worse than texting. Driving. I think you're totally right. Yeah. Every, every time, you know, I know it's going to be there. It's Mount Rainier, but it shows up in different degrees of clarity. The snow line ends at different places. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was in the car taking my son to the airport, I guess, yesterday, wasn't it? And I, I said, look at the mountains. And he looked down. I said, yep, that's 14,444 feet. And I went, there's no reason for me to know that, except I have <laughs> nothing but respect for that mountain. There's one spot when you are in Queen Anne and you are on the top of Queen Anne and you're driving down the hill. There's one little spot that if you drive slow enough, you can see it off in the distance. I used to have clear view. Clear view, and now I don't know view at all. Buildings. Yeah. See, I'm lucky where we live. I don't. I don't. I can't see it from my house because there's too many trees. But anytime we go out, you know, go out to the grocery store or whatever, you see it right there. But I'm still amazed every single yeah. time You're I so see. Yeah. So lucky. It. <laughs> that sounds corny, and I totally mean it. Randy in Newcastle, what is something that amazes you? Hello, people. Hey, Randy. Oh. Hey, you know what amazes me is how much. Uh, beautiful and wonderful things my wife does for everyone oh that is Aww. so sweet <laughs> yeah, oh danny she's, come on she's my life. She's right. your life. give me life. give me uh, give me the top two things she does for people well i'll tell you what she's done for me i was really sick with hep c and was needing a liver if it weren't for her keeping all the records making sure uh, everything was right uh, making sure my pills, my all of that stuff, I would have been dead today, and I just give her my whole life. Well, I will tell you, Randy, I have nothing but respect for you and your wife. I'm just telling you the story would have been way better if she'd have given you some right, liver. Exactly. <laughs> but it's amazing because my wife does my yeah. prescriptions. I take 20 pills a day or something. You know, yeah. I got stuff going on. And uh, I don't know how I would do that. I don't understand it. I don't even know where they are in the closet. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, I give you that, Randy. All right. What is something that amazes you? I was in absolute awe looking at Mars and the moon this morning. Thought it was so amazing. Chucka Rob in Seattle, what is it for you? Good morning, my brother. Good morning, Chucka Rob. What do you got for us? Well, I got something that we don't see anymore, very rarely. My grandson was uh, at my house a couple of weeks ago, and he was looking at the book of these giant trees and i mean these big redwoods and he's never seen one that big so the family and i did a road trip last week down to california and when you see redwood trees that are big enough danny and you probably have been through them where yeah. you can actually drive your car through them mm -hmm. and look at how monstrous these things are i mean my grandson he's seven years old and he could just he couldn't say nothing he was just kind of like just in shock that these trees are that big, even more shocked that we can drive through it and the tree wasn't going to collapse on us. I mean, these things are monsters. You no, know, these I've trees. done the I've done the drive through them thing, and they. You know what it is? Amazing. You know what's funny with these the the redwoods, the uh, Mount Rainier, the uh, Natural Arch, and the Scooby Doo Rock. For those of us inclined to this. So far, it's all been God's work. Yeah. Nobody said the Empire State Building, you know, because I, I would certainly say um, the pyramids. You got it. You got it. Good. So it put you in awe. That could even be done 3,000 years ago. But I think it's all interesting that we mostly so far pick yep. natural wonders. Kozak and Sumner, good morning. Hey, Kozak. Good morning. How's it going? It's all good. What do you got? So I'm just amazed at how incredibly huge the universe is. Yeah. You, you ever spend any try, time yeah. trying to figure that out? Because that'll, that'll uh, put you in a weird place. Actually, there's lots of videos on YouTube you can watch that show how much that we can see of uh, the universe, which is amazingly huge. But there's still more than that. So it's just almost infinite. 
You know, because when they say, and they do say this, there are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand in the, on the beach. You think, that can't possibly be true. I look up, there's 27 stars, that's it. But then you go with the giganticness of the universe. It goes acts right. It's crazy. Yeah, take a trip out to big sky country and take a look, and you can tell that there are definitely more stars than sand. I like to take a trip to my couch, turn on the TV, and watch the <laughs> show called The Universe. <laughs> Don, in uh, Tacoma, what is something that amazes you? Well, like I was saying, when I was in the military, I was went through a hurricane on a 924-foot uh, destroyer, which was exciting and scary all at the same time. Yeah, I'll, wow. I'll, I'll bet. Now, they're made for that, right? Because the idea being, because I, you know, you guys know this, my fantasy is to sail around the world. Yeah. And then your other fantasy is to not get caught in a hurricane and get killed, which happens, believe it or not. The destroyers, they're made to go through that, right, Don? Uh, not really, no. Oh, well, oh, scary. <laughs> scary, 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 scary. Yeah. They're certainly more prepared than, than, than you my, are in your than sailboat. My, than my 32-foot <laughs> sailboat. Awesome, great text into 90627. Uh, Mount Rushmore is so much more awesome in person than you would ever know from looking at pictures. That person's amazed by Mount Rushmore. I was, too. I thought it was spectacular. Uh, yeah. Another listener is amazed by the fact that Danny doesn't have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> I am amazed. I'm amazed. And one more uh, texter says that I'm amazed that Sarah still has a job. Hashtag dumb Sarah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for that. <laughs> Let's hear from Dave in Federal Way. Dave! Half a day from Guam, guys. What up, Morning. buddy? Hey, I'm amazed at how time flies with uh, our children. I have a 21-year-old now was in college and it amazes me how time flies and uh what also amazes me is that big bill i get in the in the mail for her college yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what amazes me yeah that hoppa dave appears to be 26 yeah, years right, old exactly it's a 21 yeah. year old in college that just blew my mind for sure Paul, what is something that amazes you? Uh, I'm amazed by airplanes. Like when I look up in the sky and there's, you know, an airplane up there, there's 150 people, all their luggage and everything, and it doesn't just fall out of the sky. Like I, I don't I even understand how yeah, that thing could just it's crazy. be up there. It doesn't flap its wings or anything. You know, the thing on that is because you see them far away and you, that thing's going 27 miles an hour. It's going <laughs> slow. How is this possible? But then you see them on the runway taking everything. They don't look still like they're going fast yeah. if they're doing anything. They look like they're going 80. How is that possible? This is going to sound really ridiculous, but something that amazes me, photographs. How can you just on your phone point and click something and you've got a picture of that forever? Yeah, like there was uh, a series of mirrors, in tiny little mirrors in yeah. there, and somehow it makes it look just like it looks in front of your face. Yeah. Are there actual sense. mirrors in my phone? Uh, they, you know, certainly, that's how a camera that's works. How so camera that's how a camera works. Because I when, because I'm older than you, when you say how photographs work, I think, well, you do the lens thing and you get it in focus, and you get that those chemicals. But they, you, nobody does that anymore. Yeah, it's all crazy. It's all crazy, yeah. man. <laughs> and then to see, it, like, send that video to uh, our TV screens. Like, how does TV work? That there's you Craziness. know 700 channels and they travel at the speed of light through a tiny little cable yeah. that somehow ends up and in my more, living room puts itself back together more amazing than that is the 700 channels and there's nothing on <laughs> <laughs> james and bothell what do you think buddy morning all morning well you know i i live here in bothell i'm up at the north end of lake washington here and i like to enjoy those sunset uh over kenmore but crows are migrating across. There's thousands of them. Yeah, my wife was attacked by one the other day. I swear mm -hmm. to God, it hit her on the shoulder. A yep. crow. Uh, it's crow baby season, so the crows have been very, very prolific, and they are very, very territorial. Nah, crows. Tori, what is something that amazes you? It amazes me that Mick Jagger can still dance like a maniac. And he's 75. He's 75 <laughs> yeah. yesterday. And he posts videos all the time online. And he's just moving and jiving. And I'm like, I can't even do that. Now, does he does he post things about his great-grandchild? Mm -hmm. That's wild, man. <laughs> That's How weird. about that? The fact that Mick Jagger's a great-grandfather. Yeah. Derek, what's something that amazes you? I've seen places popping up where they make ice cream using liquid nitrogen, which seems yeah. amazing and dangerous all at the same time. <laughs> this right is about, true. Don't try right this at home. <laughs> Hey, we've got a lot of shows still to come. The news is next. News is brought to you by CarPros Renting Kia. 
A man is in serious condition after an overnight shooting in West Seattle. Officers and medics responded to the scene just southeast of the West Seattle Golf Course near Delridge Way Southwest. This was about 3 o'clock in the morning. They'd received reports of a gunshot victim. The 35-year-old man was found at the scene with bullet wounds to the back and shoulder. He was taken to Harborview in serious condition. Police say the victim was likely not shot at the location where he was found, and there is no word on a suspect. Did this happen on a golf course? Uh, it happened near the golf course. Well, I've never seen, I've seen some heated golf games, yeah. but that seems extraordinary to me. <laughs> a suspected DUI driver is in custody after reportedly speeding past a state trooper at 124 miles per hour wow. in a stolen car, crashing into a guardrail and then jumping out into a fast-moving irrigation canal, all in a fruitless effort to outrun police. It seems like a good effort, though, to be honest. The the driving fast, you're always going to lose, you're always going to crash. But jumping into moving water, that seems like a good one. It didn't work, though? He didn't get away? It did not work. So this was a a patrol uh, sergeant working radar on I-90, and that's when the car sped by 124 miles an hour, and he, the suspect, attempted to make a high-speed exit off of the freeway and crashed into the guardrail. That's when he jumped into the irrigation canal and was caught by deputies just a little bit further down. Well, I don't know that he tried his hardest. He needed to <laughs> apply himself. <laughs> they believe he was under the influence of something and had been breaking into several homes and the car was stolen as well. What kind of car do you know? I do not. Because 124 is not nothing. Nope. No, no that's fast. An exotic African crested porcupine who had been wandering around Pierce County for over a year and a half has been caught. Were we looking for it? Oh heck yeah! A year and a half, we couldn't we couldn't catch a porcupine. They don't You'll move recognize that fast. It. It'll yeah. look like the thing with porcupines all over it. <laughs> right. For the past 15 months, the crested porcupine has become a bit of a local celebrity. He was spotted eating people's plants, chicken feed, cat food in and around Spanaway. And they wanted to make sure they got him because they're not from here. It's amazing he you survived know, this long. You know, that's Trump. we got to get it. It's not <laughs> from here. Let's kick it out. If he has any kids, let's separate them. I say unfair. African crested porcupines are native to northern and central Africa. They can grow to 30 pounds. Their that's big. Quills can get 18 inches long. And it is bigger than the regular type of porcupines. Plus, they have a mohawk-like pattern on its back. Cool. Are we allowed to shoot them? Are they endangered species or what? Why would you want to shoot one? It's eating my cat food. I mean, not my (laughs) cat food, but my cat's cat food. Eat my plants. If it's it's in my garden, yeah. It was in people's gardens. No, I think if it's in your garden, you can shoot it no matter what they say. Yeah, I think that's true of any animal. Right. Well, good thing Paul's not in control because it's on its way to the Oregon Zoo in Portland. That's another option. You could go, you could that. go that way. <laughs> but that means I'm a homeowner with a vegetable garden. I'm not the kind of guy that wrestles wild porcupines to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Well, the heat continues to be on. It's going to be hot throughout the weekend. A lot of people searching for beaches and waterways to enjoy and cool off. Yeah. One place you don't want to do that, Juanita Beach Park. It's a beautiful beach area in Kirkland. However, they have found high level of fecal contamination. Well, I don't want that on me. It's going to try to sugarcoat that, but you don't. Don't fecal coat that. (laughs) Don't sugarcoat the fecal. So advisories have been posted. Contaminated water all around Juanita Beach in Kirkland. Do not go in the water. Ew. They're still trying to get fires in Northern California under control. It has reached the city of Redding, killing one person and injuring many. They said this is the um, very fast-moving fire that has prompted a lot of people to need to evacuate near the Sacramento River. They said this is the largest uh, city in the area that they have now tried to evacuate and get under control. The um, Sacramento River? shockingly nice mm. really cool it's a, you know it's a, and it's big it's not nothing yeah. people take their boats out on it i've seen ladybird <laughs> oh yeah so yeah. i <laughs> do you guys remember there were two police officers who were caught on camera flipping a coin to determine whether or not a speeding motorist would go to jail yeah, yeah. i remember that well we are now finding out yesterday they got fired 
they said, you, you can't do that. You can't well, flip a coin. Can't you rehabilitate a coin flipper? Do you have to really, these people have jobs, they, they don't have jobs, but I'll bet they have families and mortgages oh, and sure. they have their own kids in college. That seems a little excessive. Suspension? Give them and, a... Yeah. yeah. And by the way, as a uh, ex uh, and rehabilitated criminal, hmm. I'll take a, fl- a flip of the coin anytime. At least you've got a shot. Yeah. yeah. You know, they don't usually give you a shot. Oh, not a good one anyway. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're in the back of the car, life's a bummer if they say, you know what? Heads or tails? Heads. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm guessing that the internet's not their friend that this story was picked up by so many different people and they just have to make an example out of them. All right. Well, I think it's wrong to make examples of anybody. It's a bummer. After police arrested a 25 year old man, he said, I work at Krispy Kreme. I'll give you donuts. If you just let me go home, they'll go for that. Right? No, I'm afraid that's actually stand up bribery. Mm. That is, he might've been sitting down, but either way, it's bribery. (laughs) Matthew Rosenberg, 25, being charged with attempting to bribe a public employee. But not seriously, right? He wasn't, it was a joke. He's under arrest. I'll give you some donuts. He was not kidding. So he was arrested. He had an air pistol and a bag of weed on him. And he said, come on, guys, I work at Krispy Kreme. No, really. I work at Krispy Kreme. I'll I'll get you all the free donuts. They're like, all right, come on, you're, you're under arrest. No, no, really. I'll get you yeah, free donuts. You can't. I've seen it done. You can't push it. You can offer your little comical. Yeah. I hope you, nobody's going to take me any more seriously than it takes to let me go. But if they're pushing you, they're telling you we're going to arrest you for this, and it's not a nothing charge. Although I think this is going to fall away. Yeah. Somebody's going to plead stupid, and that's going to be that. Yeah, he was arrested, and a, one of the other officers said, "Yeah." When I said no to the donuts, he offered cash. Oh, uh, well, well the, that changes that everything. Changes Whoops. everything about that story. Attempted bribery. Yeah. <laughs> a man is accused of stealing an ambulance from the Banner Desert Hospital and was eventually caught. This is in Arizona. And they said, what happened? Why did you steal this ambulance? And he said, it was too hot to walk home. No, that's fine. The other thing is, especially with our traffic, you just turn on the lights and sirens. Yeah, everybody gets out of the way. Yeah. Well, uh, earlier in the show, we were talking about the record heat, that literal records have been broken in places like Death Valley and Palm Springs. So I would imagine Mesa is pretty darn hot right now. On the bright side, the ambulance is in fine condition. Nothing happened. It was just sitting outside his house, and he was inside with the AC on. Yeah, I'm afraid he's still in trouble, (laughs) even if he doesn't offer them donuts. I think that guy's going to go to jail for a day or two. (laughs) Ohio. Painesville Municipal Court Judge Michael Chicanetti. All of Ohio, Painesville. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is apparently known for having creative sentences handed down, and he's doing it again. He told a criminal uh, this dude was found guilty of criminal mischief after a night with friends in a park. This dude had jumped on top of a van and placed a traffic cone on it. He then tipped over a porta potty, knocked down a Wi Fi bridge, and threw two life uh, saving rings into a lake. Well, that is where they go. So I'll stand up for him now. And they, he just sent him <laughs> home. But uh, yeah, this started out nothing the mischief. Who's going to put you in jail with that? But then it, it accelerated. Yeah. So the judge says to this kid, You like to screw around with that crap? Well, then that's what you're going to do for three days. You acted like an animal. You're going to take care of animals. You're going to go down to the county fair with the horses, the goats, the cows, the pigs, and the sheep, and you are going to shovel out their number two until the 4-H, 4-H leaves. Every night, you're going down there and scooping number two. Okay. What was his alternative? Did he throw out an alternative? Because can, can they just do that without an alternative? Can they say 60 days in jail? Or, nope. Nope, just that's, that's nope. a thing? Well, I used to uh, scoop poop for a living, so I would, I would take that and say, All right, I'm not <laughs> yeah. going to jail. Well, there are more conditions. They said, um, I'm going to commute the rest of your jail sentence as long as you enroll in college for at least six hours and you're not allowed to go to the park. He only has to go to college for six Six hours. hours? They're not going to give him a degree for six hours. (laughs) Uh, Six hours, meaning it's probably three courses. Oh, six hours a day. Six hours um, if it's every day or if it's a, a week. And his mom is his probation officer. Well, it's all it's all weird, but I don't I don't hate it. Yeah, you he's know? trying to teach him a lesson. Yeah, uh, 
and it's not excessive. You know, yeah. he did tear, throw over a porta potty. That's where you lose me. It's not embarrassing either. Like he could put a sign on while he's scooping yep. the poop. You know, That's like true. they do that sometimes. Poop scooper. Yeah. Yeah. Could be worse. Saudi Arabia have said they are suspending oil shale freight, which is one of the world's most important tanker routes. And that's because Yemen's Iran-allied Houthis has attacked two ships in the waterway. This is, of course, having an effect on the stock market, looking at oil futures, uh, barrel prices. They said they these guys are in a big war, and they said, all right, we're not going to be doing any more oil shipments through the Red Sea. You know, no, I don't really know about that particular thing. But, you know, I, I saw Captain Phillips. Yeah. Is that it? So then I looked into it because I was interested. You're not allowed to have weapons on these giant tanker, uh, tankers when speedboats pull up with 10 guys, 10 lousy, stupid-looking, hungry guys. Yeah. But they have machine guns, and that big tanker becomes theirs immediately. You you uh, you get the, the thing from the government and from the oil owner and the ship owner. Don't fight back. Surrender. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're taken captive and held for ransom. It yeah. seems all unfair. Give me a bazooka and a boat. Now I'll change the world. <laughs> and you don't mean the bubble gum. Right. <laughs> A London man about to be arrested was determined not to go down without a fight. fight. Deputy Taylor McDaniel had responded to a call that Robert Casey was walking down the road screaming, causing a disturbance. When police arrived, Casey, age 39, was still on the road acting crazy. Now, they told Casey he's under arrest. Oh, that's the joke I was going to make. I'm pretty pleased I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he was acting Casey. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm pretty pleased. Don't do it. So the cops say, you're under arrest, buddy. And he responded by taking his shirt off and getting into a fighting stance. <laughs> <laughs> Put up your dukes. He then charged the cop and tried to fight him. He was able, the cop, to get Casey into his cruiser which is when he started to try to kick out the windows of the cruiser. Yeah. They finally got him into uh, the custody. trunk. Oh. <laughs> got him to take a mug shot, which is perhaps one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my life. Really? Time. Oh, I saw this. The guy's mouth is just a mess, like his teeth. I mean, he looks crazy even without these like chompers going every other direction. Oh, so they're bad teeth, not he got beat. Yeah, no, no, no. It's uh, he, he looks like just you know a deranged individual to begin with, but then he has one of the craziest sets of teeth I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like the Halloween teeth. You seen those? Yeah, like, yeah, like they're sure. fake. Yeah, yeah, they don't they don't. And look also, real. the what do they call them? The redneck teeth. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, Billy Bob okay, teeth. Got it. Billy Bob teeth. Sure. It makes Austin Powers look like he's got a beautiful set of chompers. Yeah. That is super scary. Danny, been, you, you've gotten into a handful of fights. I have. Have you ever been the rip my shirt off be- to prepare for a he fight? He wasn't guy? wearing a shirt in the first place. <laughs> right. uh, um, yeah, really? really? Yeah, when I was younger, because I just saw that's that's what people did. Also, uh, the last fight I can think of on the street I was in, I was wearing these high heeled pointed toe boots, and I took them off, and now I'm barefoot and ready to go. Dude, I had boots on that were pointy <laughs> and had a heel, and I just gave them up without even being asked. How about a nice story in the news? Yeah, I like that. A mama duck in Minnesota has captured hearts across the nation after a photographer snapped an image of her leading her ducklings across a lake. This is an amateur wildlife photographer who was able to capture this crazy, crazy image that uh, a lot of people are saying voting for her for mom of the year. Because it was like 75 ducklings. It turns out it wasn't just her ducklings. (laughs) Every really? little duckling was help, oh, going with her to cross the lake. 76 ducklings. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I thought just from seeing the pictures and the video, I thought I was making up 75, but it really was that many no, ducklings. No, yeah, yep. it was. Uh, the thing with it was when I first saw it, I thought they were sea monster pictures because there's the regular duck with a few <laughs> ducks on its back, yeah. and then there's a kind of a little gap, and then an up and down thing, you know, tens of feet long right, with a yeah. bunch of ducks. It looks like they're riding on something. Yeah. Like something's underneath them besides the water. That's really cute. Normally they'd have a flock of 10 ducklings. Nope, she had 76. No, they. Uh, how many of them are hers? They said oh, likely 10. Okay, so 66 ducklings are just going for the ride. <laughs> okay. Yeah, be- best mom of the year. Super cute. Now the little ones taste better. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, baby animals always Baby taste animals better. always taste better. They're more tender. Yeah, and they die easier. <laughs> oh, that's where it went too far. But what is she like, the Angelina Jolie of uh, <laughs> duck, the duck world? She just goes yeah. around adopting A couple of Cambodian ducks. ducks. Yeah. 
Walt Disney has announced they will stop using single-use plastic straws and plastic stirrers at all its locations. I kind of want to go because I like my straws, but it seems like a real thing that eventually I have to stop being so stubborn and adapt and either drink without a straw, bring my own straw, or they have biodegradable straws. Yeah, yeah that's what we have. We have to get all get our own reusable straws because those I have papers, silver ones. The paper straws are terrible. Terrible. I have. I have these. They're not actual silver, but they look silver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I got them from Starbucks, and I stole them. This will eliminate 175 million straws, 13 million stirs annually. Neat. Imagine that's that's a lot of stuff in the ocean. In the ocean, yeah. Have you ever seen that thing about the plastic island or that's trash awful. island? It's crazy. Yeah. It's like it's as, it's as big as New Hampshire or someplace. <laughs> It's Friday. I know, I know what that, that means. means. It's time for the Friday Fun Facts. Yay! Well, Friday, and today is the day that Mission Impossible opens. Derek will tell us about the movie reviews in just a few minutes. In the meantime, a few fun facts about the movie. All right. Mission Impossible, based on a TV series that ran from 66 to 73 and then 88 to 90, Jim Phelps is the only character from the TV series to appear in the movie. It was supposed to be a Rob, uh, sorry, Peter Graves. Right. He backed out, was replaced by John Voight. Okay. And and uh, Ethan, whoever, is not a, right, from the TV show? They mm-hmm. made that name up? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, I used to watch that show, and I totally thought that was yeah. a name from the show. Not Ethan Hawke. What the hell is the character's name? Hunt. I think it's Ethan Hunt. Yeah, that sounds right to me. I don't remember. Derek will tell us in just a few minutes. Uh, the mustache Henry Cavill grew in order to play the villain in Mission Impossible was expected to shave it off for uh, another movie and Paramount wouldn't allow it. So they had to do post production, digitally removing his mustache, making it the most expensive mustache in movie history. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, <laughs> That's pretty, pretty interesting. Crazy. So just a few minutes, Derek will tell us about that. Uh, News this morning brought to you by Car Pros Rent in Kia. And so the movie reviews are coming up. Music news, sports, and so much more. So stay here. Starting with music news, on the first Foo Fighters album, Dave Grohl played every single instrument. And here we are, 20 years later, he is trying that method again for an ambitious new project. He gave an interview and Dave Grohl revealed he recorded a 25-minute instrumental song on which he again plays every instrument. Now, is there a contest I can win to never hear a 25-minute <laughs> instrumental from Dave Grohl or anyone else? He also filmed the recording process, which shows him running from one instrument to another. He said, people would ask me, why are you doing this? And I'm always like, I don't know, because I've never done it before. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> kind of rethought my, my stance, because no matter how good you are at all those instruments, there's guys that play just that one instrument for a living, session musicians, that do it better. Yeah. But I don't think you need it that great. Like the bass line for this song... It's not, blah, 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 blah. it's boom, blah, boom. Of course, of course he can do it. Well, it's pretty admirable either way because I couldn't do that bass line. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I couldn't play one of uh-uh. those instruments. Now, everybody can play the drums a little. All right. That's my theory. <laughs> as a former drummer, I don't know if I should take, uh, take that as an insult. Hey, were you a drummer? Yeah, I was. But it's been a long time since I played. Were you in a band? I was in a couple of bands. I did mostly like school, like played in. Uh, Symphonic band and the marching band, a jazz band. And you were then, the drummer in the marching band? Uh, one of cool. That is Seven, about yeah. a bitch, man. We're, no, I know. You weren't that big. My nephew was that, did yeah. that. Roseanne Barr sat down with Fox News' host Sean Hannity for her first TV interview since ABC canceled her sitcom Roseanne. The interview was conducted live, but portions are also airing on today's edition of Hannity. Roseanne Barr talked about her controversial racist tweet and she discussed Donald Trump, and uh, some of that, as I said, will continue to air today. But she was still pretty defiant, apologizing by saying, I'm sorry that you were hurt by my words. Right. I'm sorry if anyone was offended. I always yeah. love when they do that. You know, if Roseanne should be fired, and she should, make no mistake about it, 
Remember the lady that used to pretend to be black? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was she not in big trouble? How did she not get in any trouble? I Aside mean, from being ridiculed. Had to change her name her and move away and lost her job. <laughs> I just saw it on TV, giving interviews under her real name. No, she didn't. Oh, really? She went away for a little while, came right back and said, you know, the money's in being this person. So I, I super resent her. That's weird, because she did change her name. Yeah, like, yeah. She changed it. Well, I don't know if she also- changed it back or put it up on the Chiron. It said the name that I knew her by... And she was still talking about identifying as African American, which yeah, you can't identify fa- as African. She's facing fraud charges. That she might be going to jail. Good. So, I liked that her. Work out for so, her. what is she fa- facing fraud charges for? She uh, wrote a book, earned money, and hid it from authorities, and well, took I'm... money from the government for like you know welfare or something. And she had actually earned almost a hundred thousand dollars. No, she was the head of the ACLU. Remember? Uh, NAACP. NAACP. Yeah. Thank you. It's the one of the initials. Charlie appears to have found their angels. Naomi Scott, who is currently Jasmine in Disney's upcoming Aladdin remake, a British actress named Ella Belinsky, and Kristen Stewart from Twilight fame are going to be the three angels in the Charlie's Angels reboot. I like the Belinsky because it sounds like something you do. What are you going to do? I'm going to do a Belinsky. What are you going to do? This is being directed by Elizabeth Banks, and she will also be taking a role in front of the camera as she will be playing Bosley. Well, that's cool. Mm-hmm. September 27th, 19, 2019 is when that new movie I think is Bosley's out. real name, the actor, was Tom Bosley, but that might have been the guy on Abbey. I don't know. But it's interesting to see a, a lady get a man's, not a man's job, but a man's character. Mm-hmm. That's good. And that lady, I love that lady. I think she's Elizabeth super Banks. talented. She is, yeah. All right, if you missed the big announcement, we are throwing Danny a birthday bash. Dun, 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 dun. Surprise. Yeah. Oh, man, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is completely free, and we encourage you to join us. Chandler's Crab House, South Lake Union. Each year, we throw a big birthday party for Danny Bonaducci, and each year, it's totally free. Yeah. We are encouraging people to RSVP by going to KZOK.com slash Danny's birthday. We want to make sure that everybody gets in. Yeah. Uh, but And we, gets breakfast, too. That's we, Free it, breakfast. Yeah. Free breakfast. That is courtesy of Schwartz Brothers Bakery. Swing by to say hi or hang out for the whole show. That is up to you. But it's our live broadcast for Danny Bonaducci's birthday next Friday, the 10th of August, two Fridays from now. A couple of Fridays from sure. now. Sure. Yeah. yeah, two Fridays And from four now. Fridays from now. When Hoppa Dave called up this morning, I was thinking just at the last second, as he already hung up, I thought, oh, I should invite him to my birthday party, but I don't need to. All you need to do is RSVP, and I'll still end up buying you breakfast. That's right. So super cool. And again, that's Chandler's Crab House, South Lake Union, Friday, August 10th, 5.30 a.m. to 9.30, and RSVP, kzok.com, slash Danny's birthday. Let's take a look at sports. Sports. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-OA. That's 1-800-DUI-OA. The Mariners were off yesterday, but resume action today, playing the Angels. First pitch, 707 on Root Sports. We will be sending Wade LeBlanc to the mound. They'll send some other dude. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> some guy. Rainey. And some action before the trade deadline. Cole Hamels has been traded from Texas to the Cubs. Yankees got pitcher Jay Happ from Toronto. And Aaron Judge was hit by a pitch and has a chip fracture in his right wrist. The phenom for the Yankees will miss three weeks at least. Jeez. He was hit by Royals pitcher Jacob Junis. Who on I, purpose or on accident? On, by accident. 90. Do they still do that, though? They still bean you on purpose, don't they? Yeah, but they'll hit you in the arm, the yeah. back. They like brush that. you back. Yeah. I know that one. Yeah. This was a full count, 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Hit Yikes. him on the wrist. He is out. I like it when good old-timey guys on TV refer to moving a guy back as playing him some chin, chin music. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that was a real thing. I thought it was in the movies. In football, the Seahawks placed four-time Pro Bowl safety Cam Chancellor on the reserve physically unable to perform list. This designation officially ends his season and means he will not count towards the Seahawks' 90-man roster. When, when was he injured? Last season. Last injured. Seahawks have also waived Malik McDowell, who was hurt in a 2017 ATV crash. Never saw any field time. Uh, the Sounders resume action on Sunday. Match time at 2 p.m. versus NYCFC. 
That's a look at your sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys at 1-800-DUIOA. Today is Friday. I know what that that means. means. New movies in theaters. Everybody excited about Mission Impossible Fallout. This is an action adventure from Tom Cruise, Henry Cavill, Simon Pegg, Ving Rhames, and the rest of the gang. So probably needs no introduction. Tom Cruise and Ethan Hunt are back racing against time after a mission goes wrong. Derek, tell us, what do the reviewers have to say about Mission Impossible Fallout? It seems impossible this series can continue to be great, but it is 98% fresh. Wow. Nice. 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 right. Taking a look at the Rotten Tomatoes uh, algorithm. Let's see what they have to say about Teen Titans Go to the movies. This is an animated adventure. I used to watch that with my kids. Yeah. Maybe my kids were there. Well, they're going to the big screen (laughs) with the voice uh, actors Will Arnett, Kristen Bell, Nicolas Cage. This is a PG action adventure movie. And Derek, the reviewers say what? If you have kids, you will go see it, but you'll also have a good time. 89% fresh. My goodness. Because people like to bash Nicolas Cage. Put him in anything they talk about. It's over the top. It's crazy. Why do you do it? I'm glad to see this go. We've also got a movie starring Timothy Chalamet. And it's called Hot Summer Nights, a rated R. This is the dude. He was in Lady Bird, but he also won an, or was nominated for an Academy Award uh, for that movie where he plays uh, a young man who has a lover who's a man. And it was a pretty, pretty controversial movie for some. Hot Summer Nights is the name of this movie set in Cape Cod over the summertime. It's a fun and stylized thriller that follows a teenager who gets in over his head dealing drugs in his neighborhood. Hot Summer Nights, the reviewers say what, Derek? There's nothing hot about it. 46% rotten. And reviewers love that kid. Yeah. You you put him in a movie, you're going to get some decent reviews. Uh, Call Me By My Name, that was the movie, right? That was the movie. Supposed to be super, super good. Uh, But Hot Summer Nights is not. All these movie trailers will be up at KZOK.com. And uh, if you want a chance to win free movie tickets, Derek, tell them how. That's right. If you want to win one of these movie tickets, you can do it by using the Adam Tickets app, which lets you browse movie titles, buy tickets, invite friends, pre-order concessions all from your phone, and skip the lines. Today, Adam Tickets wants to give you a chance. Just text them now. Text WIND, W-I-N-D, to Adam1. That's 28661 for your chance to win. Standard data and text message rates may apply. Thank you very much. A busy weekend in store. Paul, you are going to be at Car Toys in Linwood tomorrow? Yeah, that's right. 11 to 1 at the 31st Annual Car Toys Tent Sale. Huge deals on car audio, car video, uh, any kind of safety tech you need, backup cameras. Did did you say you're giving away an Alpine deck of some kind? Yeah, brand new uh, Alpine Halo 9. It's super cool. It's got like every bell and whistle you can imagine. Big 9-inch touchscreen. But I'll be down there 11 to 1. Come say hello. I've got uh, Enter to Win Foo Fighters tickets as well. Cool. So that's Neat. not too bad. What's it's, uh, 11 to 1 right off uh, I-5 on 196th, the uh, Car Toys in Linwood. Cool. All right, so that is tomorrow from 11 to 1. And Danny, you are going to be out at Snoqualmie Casino tonight. I am. 7 to 9. Uh, Snoqualmie Casino is doing a thing called uh, Free Concert Fridays. Maybe they got it from us. Uh, there's lots of bands going on all summer long. Free of charge tonight is... Uh, The Count 77, that guy from the History Channel's Counting Cars. So we'll be out there. Come on up to Snoqualmie Casino. Say hey. You can get all the info at snocasino.com. Well, you guys are just getting around. Yeah. Yeah. You know who else gets around? I do (laughs) know who else gets around. That would be my friend, Steve Slayton, who's going to walk in this room any second now. What he's going to do, he's going to start playing classic rock almost immediately because he was born for that gig. We should get out of his way. Have a great weekend. Bye.